Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. All right, we're good. We're going. We're rolling. We're live. Oh shit. Oh shit. So we're we are uh, post tornado warning. This almost didn't happen because a tornado. Dude, one actually hit down like where we are from. Yeah, we're from Mountain Grove, and there's been like a couple tornadoes spotted out there. Oh really? Yeah. Wait, where's Mountain Grove at? It's about an hour east of here. Oh, so you drive like this far just to get into Springfield? No, that's where we're from. We've lived up here for about three years now. Oh, okay, we respect, respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, honestly. It, it I, okay you guys we're live with two strippers okay. or do, yeah. do you guys prefer being called strippers or like dancers or like do you have a preference we prefer the words entertainers because that describes best what we do we entertain people. entertain okay yeah. but we're, we're entertaining right now as well exactly so broadly speaking entertainer uh-huh okay so like service level you'll tell somebody like yeah i'm an entertainer that's what i like professionally to use, but i am um I don't get offended when people call me strippers because, you know, that's what people think and that's what we do. So well, there you go. Yeah. Are well, there dan- any like I say dancer is probably the most, but I prefer the word entertainer. It's just the funnest word to say with it. I, yeah. I like it. It's a loose word. Mm-hmm. It's a loose word. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Got to go all around the table. Oh, yeah. then. There we go. Cool. So are there any like misconceptions? I know for a fact there are misconceptions about entertainers strippers dancers what's the first one that comes to your mind okay so like i told some friends that i was like having you two on today and one of them said make sure they don't steal from you oh ouch that's a fucking rude one yeah do you would you like to hear my response to them yeah yes i said honestly like well we had talked for like 15 minutes the other night and i was Mm -hmm. like honestly like she seemed like a decent human being i'm gonna treat her like a decent human being and then Yes, like I, there might be like some preconceived notions that I like that are she's more likely to do because she fits that category of like profession, but that doesn't necessarily mm. mean she's a bad person just because that's the way she makes money. That's just my opinion, personally. So because she dances, she would steal. I just don't see that one. It's probably association. Associated it's crazy with because we probably make more money than he does in a night. Like, why would we need to steal from them? But not saying it couldn't happen. That I mean, definitely does Cardi happen B. because, yeah. like, some people are questionable for sure. But that goes down like straight to your morals, like, and like the root of who you are, not just because you're a dancer. Mm-hmm. It's like I mean, it's like the NFL, right? Like the uh, a few you people say they all will beat like their wives. Exactly. Like <laughs> oh, every NFL player. It's like no, it comes like you said. It comes down to the individual character of that individual. Yeah. Th- that's what I said. Definitely. I'm like honestly, like I'll yeah, I'll keep like a bit of skepticism up, but like, and I guess keep like a guard per se. But I'm not gonna like huh. just because they fit this label. I'm not gonna like judge them and assume they're gonna act that way. Right. Very true. I mean. I'm glad hmm. you didn't think that's like we'd come in and rob you. No, I honestly, we had like a very like, you I'm not going to say heart to heart, but just a genuine conversation. Mm-hmm. Like you were literally dancing and we're like, I don't even think I saw anything. I was literally just looking at your face and you were just sitting there like talking the entire time. Yeah, like I was on stage and I just sat there and like talked. Like we were in the midst of like a great conversation. So I was like, I'm not <laughs> let this dance around. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you get some of the best conversations in the club. You do. I feel like guys really. You really do. Like guy. I feel like it's where they go to like let their guard down. Ironically enough. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Do you think any guys are like lonely? Like they're not even. All of them, almost. Really. I would say at least ninety-seven percent. Yeah. I'd go with about ninety percent, only because the other ten percent are there for like bachelor parties, there for birthdays. Like you guys were there for a birthday, you know, there to just have fun, have a wild night. But most of the time, like, the most majority percent of customers are, like, older men. And they come there seeking a woman's attention. So you think they're looking more for the attention than they are for, like, the, like, sexual pleasure then? Like, companionship, I think, is my experience at least. Uh Uh-huh. Like, uh, a lot of the customers we get in there are are known as our regulars. And it's like, I've been working at that club for on and off for three years and I'll see the same exact people come in all the time. Like they establish friendships and they come back and see you all the time. Really? So yeah. it really is more about companionship at that point. Uh huh. It's like a family. Strangely. Really? Yeah. 
that's like so weird. that's so interesting to think about it that way i'm just I, I, they you think honestly family. will have your back more than like some people too it's really weird it's real weird yeah Po show <laughs> wait how so like as far as like i don't know maybe it goes down to just like what their intentions with you like specifically are but like i know i've had a few people just like kind of just warn me about other people like when I started since they were regulars they would kind of already knew the lowdown on each individual girl and um kind of just like would give you a heads up kind of what you're getting yourself into and like like hey, don't I don't trust they, that like, bitch she yeah. might steal from you <laughs> literally might steal from you might like start rumors about you like try to get you fired like girls are ruthless so I mean anything's possible but mm-hmm. yeah is it like a doggy dog kind of? Uh-huh, most definitely. Girls are so comp like. It definitely can be, and girls can definitely have their clicks in the club. But I try and think that we make uh, we make more money when we work together. So we try, like I at least try to avoid cattiness and get along with everyone. But you can't be everyone's friend, and you can't make everyone like you. So I just try my best to just come there, make my money. I'm nice to the girls there. I don't hang out with a lot of girls outside of the club, and I think that's what keeps me, like, cool with everyone because some – a lot of the times the girls will get, like, you know, they'll get so drunk after work and then, like, go and hang out, and then, like, some of them will get in a big fight, and then it'll be like, so-and-so did this with this person or blah, 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 and then it be kind of, like, turns into a big old cat fight. Okay. So. That definitely will ruin friendships. Cat fight. Cat fight. That's a good way to say it. Mm-hmm literally a cat fight so they're like i've had a girl introduce me to somebody and then get upset with me for talking to the same person and then uh, still try to be my friend so there's some jealousy that goes on nothing but But, very jealous like okay is there like intimate jealousy or is there i'm assuming there's like that's my money maker that's exactly how it is like if you have a high profile high paying customer when is whatever like Okay, say that's my regular, and then Morgan comes up and sits by us. It, you like, don't this do big that. Word is like, called <laughs> cutthroating. Like you try to avoid like that. let them introduce <laughs> you to. What fell off? I've always found it better to like let the girls introduce you to their regulars if they're talking with them. Like don't go and sit down with them if they're already sitting with them. But also, I just think it's ridiculous. Like why introduce somebody to somebody? Hey, Maury, I think you I think you might have tugged on it a little bit. Oh, shit. No, you're cool. You're cool. It'd probably be the headphones, if anything. What do you mean? It's like it's like hooked up to this audio interface thing. No, no, you're fine. It's just uh, just just be conscious that that's like plugged in. I guess they're a little bit okay. more maxed out than I thought. So as long as you have some slack, then you're Gucci. Okay. Sounds good. Wait, wait, we were talking about jealousy in the club. Uh-huh. Love in the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has that ever happened? Oh, probably. I've heard stories. I mean, it happened when your group of guys came in. Like, it was like, damn. Like, a lot of those are really cute guys. But most of the time, since you meet, like, people at the club, you don't ever, like, see them outside of the club. Okay. But look at us now. (laughs) We're kicking it. We're chilling. Yeah. Big chilling. Mm -hmm. What about some of the... Just some of the... Because a lot of the older men, they were just, like, really overweight. uh, Not to judge, but, like... I mean, they were just, they were fat as fuck, just old men. So, That's like, America. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> Are they just, just like old men that, men. like, make money and go in there pretty frequently, or? Some people just run their own business and come in for their free time. Yeah. Okay. Or some so of like, them will put on a front that they have a lot of money, and then turns out they don't. But yeah. I will say, with the heavier set customers, they're always the most generous I've experienced. They are the hardest to give a lap dance to. Oh, it's yeah. like, you have to spread your legs so far. It's just hard. It's just hard. It gets real hard. It you guys stretched before? Uh, no. No. You are stretched should. by the end of it, so, like, why yeah. stretch before? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it definitely does wear you out. It keeps you in shape. Like, you are drinking, you're dancing, and you're just like, go, go, go. Some of the shit that they were doing on the pole was, like, impressive. We have, like, the strength of, like, trained soldiers. Like, we are... Really? Yeah. It's a lot harder than it looks. Look at that bicep. Look at that oh. bicep. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. What a camp. Wow. Damn, it actually is bigger than last time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, she was like climbing up with like her like feet up in the air, just 
fucking yeah. pulling herself up. I was like, how? How? Yeah. Arms of steel. Wow. Well, right. Motivation of money. I've never fucked around on a pole. I don't know what I could do. Really? I think it's, I could do a little I bit of damage. A lot of fun. Really? Mm-hmm. Even if you don't do it for money, do it for a hobby, do it for a workout, do it for something like. Have you ever seen those dudes that like? Well, I, I bet girls can do this as well. But uh, oh yeah, grab the pole and then the just flag pole like where yeah, and then like I hang off from the side. Just Some like the perpendicular, the perfect that. ninety. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it takes a lot of upper body strength. And I have way more upper body strength than I do lower body, so I can do like a lot of the upper body and pull trick kind of stuff. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. So, do you guys think there's any like? Uh, like, I guess just getting, like, desensitized to, like, just dudes in general. Yep. Really? For sure. Like, to where you're, like... It's just transparent. Like, I feel like your entire life, you're kind of just, like, exposed in, like, the most innocent way almost. Uh-huh. So, like, yeah, when you go and work in a club, like, you're... Ex- like, you just see, like, every side. And I think that does do a lot. The lonely dudes, the party dudes, the... Controlling, like, anything. Like, oh, you see interesting. them all. It's crazy because there's all different kinds of customers that come in there and all different kinds of people. Like, you'd never expect some people and you'd totally, like, expect some. It's just... Yeah. You Probably different talk. expectations, too. Mm-hmm. Especially, Especially when you'd go different places. Different places have different... I don't know. I could see that. Yeah, different environment. Oh, yeah. As far as, like people that come into club i would like to bring up we actually have a group of church ladies that come in and uh, they don't come in as like customers they come in and they go to the back and um they bring us like cookies and bath bombs and like all kinds of goodies and they're like is there anything you you want us to pray about and blah 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 and i actually went to church with one of them like i used to get coffee with one really Yeah. yeah so they're not judgmental at all they're just like Hey, here you go. At or first, when they come in, like, like it felt really preachy, like "Oh, we'll pray for you," kind of feeling. Uh-huh. Like, for you, kind of like let yeah. me save you. But like, I think it just depends on who you talk to. Because like, I know the girl that I talked to was like super like accepting and like kind of just wanted to like be there if you needed somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're just out there doing the Lord's work, just like we are. Like, <laughs> there you go. There like, you go. <laughs> We're all just out here doing the Lord's work. That's, That's my favorite good. thing to say about the club. Like, anytime I get done doing the lap dance, I'm like, just got done doing the Lord's work. But like, this is what he would have wanted. There you go. It is. Do you think it's kind of like the uh, like the the whole Tinder app, like what we were talking about before, just having, like, so many options, so many choices to, like, where, for example, like, like you, you form, like, a real connection with a boyfriend, whatever, and then six months down the road, you're, you're, uh, you're kind of – I don't know, things start going bad and then you're like quicker to jump off board just because... No, not at all. So it doesn't desensitize you in that way. No, I mean, unless your boyfriend's straight up fucking around and you're just absolutely done at this point, mm-hmm. you're not just going to go to work and decide you're going to off everything you have yeah. and work for. Normally, like, that job, like, pushes me so far away from, like... if like, anything, sex, you just need like, it, space to yeah. yourself, like... Really? Yeah. I've learned, like, I first had a boyfriend when I started dancing, and if anything, like, I, um, it, like, lowered my sex drive, my libido. Like, I would not be in the mood to have sex as much, because it was like, I was having to give lap dances to dirty old men all night, like, the last thing I want to do is come home and have sex. And That's a good point, yeah. Home. But, uh um, So much acting. Yeah. So much acting. A lot of acting. Wait, okay, let's elaborate on that, because I'm, I'm interested. Oh, come on, like... I know the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me is some Italian horse trainer came in and got a lap dance and put his fingers through my toes. Like, first of all, you can't communicate. Hold her toes. Yeah. yeah. And, like, you can't communicate. Like, obviously, like, that, he's that's Italian? weird. Yeah, he didn't. I don't know. Yeah. Fingers through your toes. So he's, yeah. like, he's like holding your foot. Like, like holding Both your hand, feet. but with your foot. Both my feet. Do you know how hard it is to give a lap dance like that? So hard. And then it's, like, nothing but, like, mirror. So, like, all I can do is just look at myself, like, what is my life? <laughs> what am I doing right now? Yeah. And then, yeah, like, you just have to act like you're okay with it, like, you're into it, like, kind of make their fantasy come true. Even when you're, like, losing your shit on the inside, like, what is uh-huh. this feeling? So just, just pretending to be interested, mm-hmm. pretending to be, like, be, like, It's seduced. not always like that, but it definitely plays a big part. Yeah, I mean, the main goal is to think make about the wallet, not think like, about the face. Like, you're just trying to, you come there to make money. And it's like, most of the guys, 
a lot of the guys that come in, they're smart enough to know that, like, this is just a job. There's nothing more to that. Like, girls aren't, I don't know. Some guys will come in treating it like it's fucking speed dating or Tinder. Like, you have all these different women to choose from. questions, like. Interesting, like, okay. Yeah, as far as, like, uh, so many guys just assume that you're going to go home with Do them. You like, that you're probably a prostitute, too, since that you dance. That's one thing that's that, super yeah. annoying is that they'll, like, Yeah, having already... to constantly explain to people over and over is, like, Oh, how much to get you to come home to with me tonight? Like, I'm not a prostitute. You can't <laughs> afford me, buddy. Like, that's all I say usually. But actually, actually, uh, that night you guys had came in. Not long, I'd gave a lap dance to an older customer, and he fucking whipped his whole dick out like that. Really? There. And I was like, dude, you're gonna have to put that away, or you're gonna get me fired. Like, that's a big deal. Uh huh. And um, dude, he put it away. Dance? I finished up the dance, and then I went and told the bouncers, and then he was kicked out shortly after. I was gonna say, yeah, he's probably kicked out after that. Yeah. Some but of it's them like, like don't respect you at all. Like they think just because you're dancing, like you're not worth respect, which is just totally ridiculous to me. And then there's other guys These are all assumptions. These are all assumptions, by the way. Yeah. Again, because everyone's different, just like the dancers. Uh They're all different. But it's like, you know, some guys will see it as like an art. Like, damn, she's really strong. She can do all kinds of stuff. Or like some guys will just see us as like, you know, we're a broken, like we must have been broken or hurt. Let me fix you. That's the mentality I feel like a lot of guys go in there with. Like, let me fix you. Yeah. Hey, I honestly like my mentality was what you said exactly right there. This okay. she's just making money and like I mean as females at your guys' age like I feel like you can kind of tell who's there to make money, who's kind of been there to like literally rely on it and like people who are like coming and going, you know? Like mm-hmm. I don't know. Especially once you work there, you can really tell. I could see that. I could see that. But I feel like if you're like if you have a good intuition like that, you can kind of navigate your way through it pretty well. Cuz uh, one thing I I'll give you do you care if I say your real name? Go ahead. Okay. Kind of some respect I'll give you is like you, you seem like you weren't treating me as a, as a price tag or like, like dollar signs, like mm-hmm. it, or like any of my friends, like it didn't seem like you were like, Oh, that's a guy. And I mean, I don't know if you could tell, but like we were clearly college students. Like we don't have a ton of money, honestly. And so it, it wasn't like you looked at us and you're like, Hey, I can make money from him. Mm hmm. More it like, was it was like, hey, that's a human being. Let's go sit down and have a conversation with them. Yeah. That's that's how I took it at least. I feel like when people like you come in, it's like nice and it's kind of refreshing because like not every customer is like that, you know? Yeah. A lot of them are like older. Do you ever get anti men because of that? Do you like oh, get exposed God. to like so many shitty dudes? Because like, the type of dudes that are walking into strip clubs, I'm assuming, are probably not the greatest dudes, whether they have money or not. I met some like, of the coolest people in there, but also some of the worst. Okay, I yeah. can see that. <clears throat> but like how we were saying, we had a really genuine be. conversation, and I didn't just seem like coming there to get your money. I've learned like I make my money more when I establish like those genuine relationships. So at first, like I'm not like looking to go get your money. If I see a guy alone sitting by himself, it first tells me he's probably in here to get some lap dances. Uh-huh. So it's like those are the guys I usually like target i guess i usually go sit by the guys that are sitting by themselves because they usually come in there with a purpose versus you guys you're coming in there for a night of fun you're coming in there for your birth your friend's birthday party like mm-hmm. you're coming in there to drink see some titties have a good time <laughs> and like she said earlier it's so refreshing to just have those conversations and like sit with people and you know kind of be reminded that it's fun too like it's yeah. not just a job you guys are the ones yeah that yeah make totally it fun. <laughs> yeah okay respect respect i'm glad we did that for you then those are cool dudes i, I went there with i like those did guys you guys go like mm-hmm. Around like when there was food, or did you go past ten? Uh, no, yeah, we, we went for went the for steak. Fuck yeah! It's How so good. How did you like it? What did you get? It was great. Because mm. that's what they told me. They're like, "Hey, we're going to Centerfold," and I I never heard of it before. Like, or I, no, I never been there before. I heard of it. And I uh, did you know that there was dancers? Because a lot of people don't know. No, they they're like, "Hey, we're going to a strip called called Centerfold. It has the okay. best steak, best okay, steaks cool. in town." And I'm like, "Sure, <laughs> that's why we're going the fucking steaks." <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, "All right, cool." And I was I was actually planning. I was like, I didn't I didn't know if I'd be able to make it in time, like before they left. So I was either going to meet up with them after or then, and it just so worked out that I uh, was able to get there like on time. Oh yeah. But a lot of people i know i've met like in there definitely did not know it was a strip club at first <laughs> but then like obviously some of them are only in there for the food 
Yeah. Which I don't We have so with. many guys come in like, okay, we open at noon and we'll have so many guys come in like right as the door opens up at noon. They hurry up, like go get a steak, see their titties and like go back to like work. Interesting. Okay. Or we'll have guys like that are work. in there for lunch break. They'll get lap dances and stuff. But it's like during the daytime, it's less suspicious to like their wives and stuff. Like they don't really know them. Oh. Yeah. A lot of people in there do have like relationship problems. Like a lot of m- older men, I'm like, I don't know, either like their wife has passed away or, you know, it's just not they're there. They're going anymore. through a divorce. Or they're or looking they're, at a third. You'd yeah. be surprised by the amount of couples the that go in. The amount of people looking for a third or just looking to spice up their marriage. I see people like, like they around just your age, like couples it. that just like want like a couple lap dance. They want you to dance on her boyfriend. It's so and much you. fun. Yeah. Some of the really? like, couple lap dances are so much fun. Yeah. Because you can I, see I, them I both having couples. fun and it's just, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Because you're like, hey, I'm adding to their relationship Literally. right now. Like, yeah. I, what I do right now, they're going to walk away with it and they're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah. Literally. And they'll Fuck be thinking yeah. about coming back later. <laughs> they'll be moaning my name later. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll see some That's guys awesome. just like, coming in. They're taking off the ring. They're like hiding it. And I was like, dude, if you're a cool guy, you'd bring your girl to the strip club. Like, you know, like. She women wants to love see titties women too. Just, yeah, women love women just as much as you do probably. If not more. Yeah. The it's women are probably my favorite customers that come in because they're just like in awe. They're, they're like, like frisky usually. and funky, and I feel like they're just always yeah. full of energy. They're usually the most handsiest, though. Like, oh, I haven't yeah. had to tell anyone to, like, hey, you got to chill out more than I have had a woman because they just think since they're a girl, they can get away with anything. Exactly. And they just have a girl, like, come up, slap your ass, and it's like, listen, you can't do that. <laughs> it's like, because if you do it, he'll do it. And yeah. that's not good. It's like they're living the life of a guy for, like, the first time. They're yeah. just like, oh, look, look. Yeah, literally. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, I always think about that, like on that topic of like relationships, like later on down the road, mm-hmm. just twenty years. It, like if you're with the same person for twenty years, like I'm humble enough to say that I might get boring. I think there's a good chance, and like I I've always wondered after about a that. Week, like yeah, yeah right. Know, like we're hanging out for like a solid week. Like I'm sorry, I bore you. Like <laughs> how can I spice this up? <laughs> Like, I, I think I'm a pretty interesting person, but, like, 20 years is a long time to get to know somebody. So I've always wondered about that, like, how do you keep it fresh? And it, not that I have to worry about this now, but, like, mm-hmm. later on down the road. So, like, people try, like, strip clubs. They try adding a third, like, Do you think that different... adding a third, like, kind of, like, depreciates your relationship a little? Like, allows, like, another void or whatever, like, space between you two? I, I guess like it all just depends on the person. Like, I feel like I'd be maybe a little untrustworthy of it, but that'd just be probably because I was insecure with myself. Okay. So, I can see that. Um, but like, jealousy? Like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, damn, she's on top of you more than she's me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't it's like, know. why? Are you guys closer? Yeah. I don't know. I just have never fully understood that, but I'm always there for it. So. Yeah. I feel like I'd be all about it if it came time and it's like me and my hubby wanted to Oh, in 20 years, hell yeah. yeah. But right now, when I'm in my prime, like, no, I'm a little offended. Well, 20 years from now, (laughs) could you see yourself adding in a third? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. At that point, like, what's, why not? I think it'd be, it'd be like a type of thing, like, hey, like, we mutually agree. Yeah, this is it. Like, we we need to spice this up. How was the question? And then, like, if, if we both agree that a third was, like, the solution... And I'd be like, okay, I'm about it. I'm about it. Yeah. But would you want to go to the club? Or would you, like, want to look online or something? I There was this girl messaging me on Tinder that was, like, looking for a third. Really? Yeah. And she was looking for a dude. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I am, I'm for that. Yeah. Okay. So I was confused. for her and her boyfriend confused. or her and her husband or something? Uh, her and her boyfriend. Was yeah. there a picture? She was, like, our age. Really? So, and she's, like, well, she told me her explanation Okay, wait, wait. What let's let's backtrack a little bit. I'm at work and I like match with this girl, and I usually like I, whenever I match, I just message and I just like have fun and you know so just kind of go. So do you message everybody? With... Okay, I, I guess I look at their pictures first. I, like, but what, if you match like, with them, you're already attracted to them. Not necessarily. Ooh, not ne- okay, I got have a, I have topic. like a whole <laughs> people I didn't message list. I guess okay. it's say. It's like uh, maybe last because you're going choice? so quick whenever you're like swiping. You know, like you're uh-huh. you're going so damn quick. It's like a game. Exactly. It's like, so do we a match really with superficial game that I'm not a huge fan of, but back to it's, this it's, girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I this girl. Yeah, we did get really off track. We'll, Sorry. We'll here, here. Now you're cool. Um, so this girl, she's she's. Wait, where was the original? 
Oh, oh. So she's she gives me. you at work. Yeah. So I see her at work and I'm like scrolling through her pictures. And I'm like, Is that a wait, dude? what the fuck? Like, <laughs> there's a guy. And then I scroll again. And it's just, just a picture of the guy. And then it's another guy. And I read her bio and she's like, three is a party or something like that. And I'm like, hey, so Tinder. is it like <laughs> you and your boyfriend looking for something? Like, what? why does he want another guy? What's going on with this? And she's like, yeah, basically, he's like the only guy I've ever been with. And to be honest, like, I've communicated to him, which I actually respected on her part. Oh, I've definitely. communicated to him that I, I'm starting to get interested in other guys. But, like, we didn't know how to handle this. So we thought we'd just add another guy to the equation just to see how it goes. It's like an I experiment. I totally respect that. I respect that, too, because, like, if, I would hate... Especially. I would hate, like, we were talking about before, like, just be transparent with, like, yeah. be directing. Like, I respect you so much more. Exactly. Like, if you're starting to have these urges, if Get you're starting. Get them first, like. Exactly. Like, okay, not to, not, he's not going to want me to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, that, so that, that roommate that you're, you were sitting next to upstairs, you guys were on the same couch oh, with. Yeah. That's, like, probably my best friend I made in college. Really good guy. Uh, long story short, that dude, his girlfriend of a year. And him were dating, and then out of the blue, they well they go to Arizona over spring break, so about a month ago, oh, and then they start to like kind of fight on spring break, and it was really out of the blue, and mm. I, really out of the blue. Then she ghosts him after they get back for two weeks. Then a week, another week passes, and they, they well they, then they break up at the end of that two weeks. Then like another week passes, and she posts the picture with her ex boyfriend from oh. high school that is like still down here in I guess in her life, or yeah, yeah in her life. Oh, and um, he, like, it was so ambiguous and, like, all of these problems that, like, came up in the relationship that she didn't confront then and there in the moment. She used his leverage to get out. Exactly. Oh. To at least justify to him, if not herself, Ooh, in that situation to make spot. him look like, not the bad guy, but, like, that this is why... We like I'm done with you. This basically, this is kind of why it needs yeah. to end. Why but like I just I don't respect how she didn't communicate any of that in the moment. Just like we were saying before, like just no. be fucking direct, be real in it's that like, situation. Like let me know that your ex boyfriend's coming back in the picture, or let me know that you at least have like second thoughts, you know. And I'm wondering if all those problems that arise, like were they all sudden at the very end, or did they at least try to work through them? Were they pretty addressed? much at the end because oh, oh, i mean like damn. this is i'm okay. limited there's women but like this that. is coming from his roommate and also like a very good friend of his that he tells me most of what was going down and it didn't like it seemed pretty smooth sailing but they were only together then. for a year yeah for a year did they like start dating right when they met or did they at least talk for a while they talked for like probably six months so they oh, geez. but they were dating about six months something like that hmm yeah Damn, that's a hard one. Yeah. I just didn't know what you guys thought of that. I I feel like um, mm-hmm. girls can, like, we can be really bad to be like, oh, we want you guys to be direct. I feel but like we can they kind of. bad about doing it ourselves. I feel like mm. she kind of may have done that to, like, spare his feelings. I, I think know that's it exactly seems what she like did. she didn't think about them at all, but I think to her, that might have been, like, the easiest way to kind of ease out of it is maybe not fully direct it. Like, like, not really have to, like, be upfront about it. Like, just, I don't know. I feel like she kind of would put the blame on them. Well, you know, this and this happened. I feel like so she'll end up having was regrets my for, sure. for doing this. Like you said, she tried to justify it for herself. And that's really fucked up. I agree 100% with both of you. Mm-hmm. I think she was justifying it to herself because she, oh, he's graduating. He's moving back to Casey in like two, three weeks. So like oh, that was shit. part of it. And then also like what you said, like she wanted to spare his feelings. But I'll say this in my opinion. In my opinion, I think as guys, and you, okay, give me like a rebuttal on this, like for the girl's perspective, like what you would want in this situation. But I think as dudes, like handling the truth in this situation, as hard as that truth may be, whether it be like, yeah, I got to know you and like over time you kind of, I kind of realize you ain't shit. Like if that's, I feel like that is totally a thing. I'm sorry. 
but I definitely feel like that's a thing because I feel like depending on how fast you started the relationship, it's easy to put up a front, even for girls. Mm -hmm. So like she can come off sweet and innocent and, you know, all goody two shoes, but end up being like a crazy psycho bitch and like a liar or whatever. But he can also seem super sweet and interested, but end up like not being able to provide at all. So I oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. I would definitely say, like, I've been in a position where it's, like, I tend to jump way too fast into a relationship, and then it's, like, I loved you because I didn't really love myself, and then now that I love myself, I don't really feel like I love you anymore, and that can be complicated shit. That's some deep and it's shit, it's, like, I you think. definitely, like, helped me get through this time period, and I feel like we both benefited from each other, but I feel and like at some point, of, you realize, yeah, like, there's no more growing left here, you yeah. know? You kind of just have to, like quit water in the dead trees yeah. but that's really frequent at this age too uh, i don't I know that social that media going. does that though true true like social media has a huge part in that yeah. just knowing all the options and knowing all I the attention you're getting on there and you're like oh i could switch up and maybe try this out like i'm interested in what they're presenting themselves to be uh-huh. i wonder and like, social media is always the best version of yourself so it's like you don't get to see all that you get all this planning someone. and preparing to post whatever you're gonna post what you're gonna say yeah. basically where you're gonna say it and who to so like yeah you it's definitely can come off self. yourself so it's like uh, people are constantly perceiving you as this like great or beautiful person when deep down like you might be not shit yeah not <laughs> shit but I'm just wondering if your friend like if they were together for a year and he was moving back to KC did they like plan for that because I know me personally like if I'm invested in you like, I'm trying to see a future with you. So if I know that you're moving, like, I'd kind of want to have plans of what to do when that time arises, you know? That's a good so, point. Like, I feel like maybe they, she wasn't that serious about it or didn't think he was that serious if it was never brought up. She is old, or she's younger and he's, like, a senior. So somebody kind of hypothesized, like, maybe she just wanted, like, an older guy for a fling or something like oh, that. Okay. Or, I could see yeah. that, too. I, yeah, I don't know if that was what it was. Or I feel like people are really bad to talk to people or start dating people because they're bored they don't want to be alone and then instead of like making friendships first they genuinely don't like that person or they're just occupying their time and then are unhappy in the end and then it becomes a big thing of you don't want to hurt that person you don't know how to cut that person off or like you don't want to hurt their feelings but at the same time you're unhappy and you're True. never upfront about that at the beginning yeah and it goes back to what you were saying, kind of like with like the not loving yourself. Like it might be like like loneliness or like not loving yourself manifesting itself in boredom or loneliness. And then you're like, oh shit, maybe I should fill this void. And then you fill the void for a little bit and then you get bored of that void and then you start to like yourself more maybe. Yeah, and then you realize like, whoa, why am I this boss ass bitch and what am I doing? And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, damn, now I got to take out the trash. Yeah. This is bad, but, like, what I've learned from dating and just, like, at least in, like, your early 20s is to not take it too seriously anymore. Because I used to get really hung up on, like, that one person. I feel like, like that's true to an extent, but also, like, don't put your eggs all in one basket, but, like, don't sell yourself short either. Like, if you really like somebody and you feel that connection, I feel like you should be honest with yourself enough to, like, express that. And if they don't feel the same way you'll at least know. So you're not sitting there playing games wondering if they feel the same way, but you're like honest, like, hey, I might be talking to other people, but like, I am so serious about this, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It kind of just goes to play with like... So g going back to the... Um, I like your idea about not taking it too seriously. Like, we're young, we're in our 20s, we're trying to figure everything all out, and we definitely shouldn't be taking anything too Are seriously. we really young, though? Like, that's my question, because we don't live that long. Right? <laughs> so It does, I don't know, it's like 21 going on 40. I don't like, know, I say if you like somebody, go for it, but be fucking honest. Like, mm -hmm. be straight up. Easier said than done. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's true. I feel like a lot of people say that, but they act differently. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just a really straight up person, so I don't feel that, but I definitely see it, so... See, me and her are like the yin and the yang. She can be very straight up to where as I cannot like, you know, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, even though that it would probably be best hurting. I mean, just being up front with it. Maybe, yeah, it's not even hurting causing them more problems. And, you know, then I feel like because honesty hurts so much, sometimes it just is seemed as so bad. But it's really like the best for you. I feel like you grow yeah. so much more. I, I don't I, at least for me. 
the ambiguity of just like so many different possibilities of, and then your your imagination starts taking control is so much. Are you so realistic much. though with those imaginations? Well, that's the thing is I feel like sometimes in those situations I'm thinking more emotionally than I am rationally okay. than I would like to be and then I'm not necessarily as real. Like I, I would say most of the thoughts realistic, yes, but some extremely unrealistic. I like to verbally say it out loud sometimes, all the ways I'm feeling, and sometimes like put them down on paper, and then just kind of like see what I'm dealing with, and then mm. kind of go from there. Just I, because they I say writing's like, the best therapy. It is. Yeah. It really is. I've been journaling for three years now, and that shit feels good. What about? Um, I have this daily journal, and uh, each day it asks you a new question. Who is your best friend last year? Who, um, Me. what are <laughs> you doing right now? Like, um, some of like them are really who, fun. What do you like to do at parties? Are you more of a, this kind of person or that kind of person? It'll just ask you all kinds of random questions. But each day you can answer that question. And um, since I've wait, so they're the same questions now, every day, or they switch up every day. No, it's a different question each day. Three hundred sixty-five okay, okay. different questions. She oh, very like cool. Two of these books, but, with three. Well, yeah, but, that's cool. Um, so they're cool to look at. Like, so you, wait, you go ago. back every single year. That's what I'm saying. Each oh. year you'll get to go answer that question again on that day, and it's really interesting to see how far you've come. And it's like, wow, how in different just a year. Thought. It's amazing how much a person can change. It's like I was not that sad, broken piece of shit I was before. <laughs> and it's just really interesting. To see I that. love that so much because that's like my favorite thing about New Year's or like any like very memorable time, like your birthday, uh, I've wh- never whatever. I'm a fan of birthdays. Well, just just that day that you're like, at least for me, like it's a it's a focal point for your memory to where you're like, you kind of reflect back and you're like, oh shit, who was I this time last year? And you're like, I was hanging out with them. I was doing this. I was like, I was so like, hung up on her, but like now I'm like so much better off and I love myself more like with X, Y, and Z. It's like, yeah. And then, and then you, like you said, like you, you appreciate yourself more because you're like, you're like conscious of the growth that you've experienced over just one year. Yeah. For me, the hardest part about writing it down is like being able to like put it on words and be like so straight up with myself. Cause like it's so easy to say it, but like when you write it, it's on the paper. Like I don't know, and going yeah. back, like some of the shit you can write can like really hurt. Or, like, yeah, put you in your feels or like just be like. It's like wow, I really felt like that. Thing. Do you think it's the same psychological phenomenon whenever you type it versus you write it? I don't think so. Really? So you, just writing it down for you, like I does think something. Writing different? it down does do a little bit more for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, reading it in general kind of does the same. My grandma has been journaling since 97. Every day, she writes a little short paragraph just about her day and what's going on. And I just think it's, like, really cool. Like, when you pass away, you'll be able to give that to your grandchildren or whoever you loved. And it's, like, that's every memory, every, like, thought, like, their whole day. Like, it's kind of all you have to, rem- like, be reminded of know. yourself and, like, Definitely past journal. versions that's of you. Journaling is where it's at. You could choose back on like certain days too if you choose to, or different Just thoughts. To think, like, Flip what to a was random I page. Four twenty mm-hmm. of like nineteen seventy seven. There you go. <laughs> Literally. That is a cool thought. That's a cool ass thought. Yeah, but I mean, I can't imagine journaling in nineteen whatever because it's all cursive. I cannot read yeah, cursive that does well. Write in cursive, but she's she like Carol? the beautiful like cursive writing. Like it's like calligraphy. It's like I don't know. It's really pretty. That's beautiful. That's gonna be like ancient pretty soon. They don't teach that no more. But she takes. Yeah, it I was gonna and say they like quit teaching that. Laminates it and keeps it in this like. Nice she laminates binder. it. Yeah. Ooh. That's adorable. Yeah. Your grandma sounds like an adorable soul. I she keep is. every birthday card I've ever gotten. Every single card I've ever gotten, I've, I keep. I used to until I like read That's this like cool. minimalism <laughs> book, and then I was like, you know what? Like, <laughs> I realize when I am on my deathbed, there won't be a single item or a single piece of clothing or anything that would have changed who I am. And it's like I try not to At least hold I feel on to good. things or keep any things more seriously. But Attachment is, is suffering. Yeah. What was it like Hindu or Buddhist or something? Something like that. <laughs> this book I've read, The New Earth, it really taught me a lot. That's Eckhart Tolle. That's what we were talking about upstairs. Oh, really? A New Earth, yeah. That's wow. Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Are you reading yeah. it on ebook? Um, Audible. Oh. Audible, yeah. That I like to read stunning. books. I've read that she book. likes to listen to them. Yeah. I like both, honestly. I like to listen to podcasts, but I like to read books. Okay, I, I feel like that. I like to listen yeah. to books, but if I'm trying to go to sleep, like I found out books are really like therapeutic to go into sleep, so I'll just start reading a book and then I pass out pretty fast. Damn. Okay, I see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Because if you're like tired so and feel like you books. can't go to sleep, like instead of like putting on TV, if you start reading a book, you'll pass out like nothing. Versus where if you have a TV on, you're going to keep staying up because it's like TV. Plus the the blue light will actually suppress melatonin reproduction, or not reproduction, uh, so melatonin it, like, production. Wakes thyroids and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally. So then you're, you're literally like starting your sleep cycle uh, like a few hours later because you're staring at that blue light, which is why they say not to look at that shit like 30 minutes before bedtime. Really? There, yeah, there's something. Actually, I just got done interning at this like sleep place. That's why I know. I know like a fair amount about sleep for that exact reason. But uh, I. Um, your cortisol mm. has so much to do with it. True. Yeah, I didn't understand that fully, but they talk about it a lot. It's insane. I don't know nothing about this, so it's like, wow, I'm learning so much. They like sleep is my everything. work has classes yeah. on it, and like we've gone really in depth about it. I've learned so much about blue light; it's ridiculous. You should really get red lights. Well, it's like sudden. Phones are the most unnatural thing, let alone like computers and screen, which most people are required for their jobs. Like they have to look at a screen all day, and it's like that is. We have so, so many bad towers and satellites, so it doesn't matter if we had phones or not. We're always exposed to some sort of radiation, so our bodies are always tense. Yeah. Like, we're always going to be kind really? of... Really? Radiation makes you tense? Yeah, like, messes with... Did you know that you're supposed to, like, actually take your shoes off and go outside for, like, 10 minutes a day? It helps you, like, stay grounded and, like, does something for your body. Don't quote me. Like, Google it. Do uh-huh. your research, but definitely. Yeah. I was really mind blown by it. Like, really? I guess it makes sense, but... It sounds cool, but it also sounds like some hippie bullshit. Which I like hippie bullshit too. Though. So that's you should not a look diss. up "Get Fit with Jodell." That's where I seen it or learned it. What? Jo- what? What? Well, Jodell. Get Fit with Jodell. Okay, I've never. She's heard here of it. in Springfield, and she like has some like she's really into health and sleep and getting your cortisol all back. Anything oh, that's pretty that cool. It's really your awesome. higher self is what's up. Wait, so I is cortisol so good? Much. Is cortisol good or bad? Because I thought that was the stress hormone. It is. So like, yeah. So like. It's so hard. I'm not the person to be reiterating this. Um, but basically just most like just because we have such like high exposure to like phones and like if we get like a hit on our social media, like we like feel like we connected to it, like seeing the notification and then go back. Like we're just always like messing with it. Like I remember. I wasn't that? Uh, that was a, yeah. I was that's like a dopamine so rush, shit. though. It's like a dopamine yeah. hit yes, getting yes, that yes. attention. Yes. So so we're just fucking with all of our like neurotransmitters. Are, yes, yeah. all of Pretty them. Pretty much any time you get like a notification or a like or just something, it's like your mind keeps going back to that. I want to like look it up. I have a whole screen like. What's your major in? Marketing. Marketing. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do with your major? I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm thinking like sales or digital advertising. Okay, you said you were doing an internship for. Um, a sleep place? Yeah. Sleep I was doing like social media work for him, which uh-huh. was, it was pretty cool. It was like content creation and whatnot, but I also learned doing that, that I'm like, I think I'm decent at this, but I don't think it's a, like a sustainable career, really. I think Marketing? I want to do something like dealing with people. No, just, I was doing like content creation, so I was like oh. basically editing like sleep videos, sleep podcasts. I would like find like GIFs online and like shit like that, articles. That's kind of cool though. It was cool. It was cool. But like after like even just three months or four months, however long I was there, like it started to get kind of old. Like I feel like quick. the way the world's progressing, though, like digital stuff like that is always going to be booming. So like you probably yeah. would always have work, at least with that. True. It's, but same with marketing. So I want to I want to learn how to like kind of do both finesse the analytics of it. Oh, like Damn. I think that would. Um, and I don't have it fully planned out or anything like that, but like pretty much how like there's something called like geofencing that the company would do, and mm, that's I've like heard of that. so like say you go into a, a Walmart and you want them to notice your product, then if you go into that Walmart, you enter the geofencing like territory, then you'll receive a notification on your Facebook or social media or something that will relate back to their product that you possibly oh saw in the gosh. store. So you're who's like, if I talk about something, you're who pops up on my phone. No, but I'm interested <laughs> in that. I find oh, that really interesting. No. I also like the ethics behind that are so fucking weird. weird. crazy how that works. Like, I that's think that's such an invasion weird. of privacy. Is, yeah. Like, Because I've had my um, phone in my pocket. Was that my physical therapy place? They had like a bowl of candy. I got out of Sour Pitch Cat. Sour <laughs> Sour Pitch Cat. Wait, did you say Sour Pitch Cat? It was something like that. Yeah, I got out one of those, ate the candy, whatever. 
But my phone was in my pocket the whole time. And then, boom, sure enough, I was scrolling through Instagram and, like, Sour Patch Kid. Wait, did you say the word Sour Patch? Or? I didn't. Dude, no. no. What the fuck? I swear yeah. that's What the thing. fuck? I am it was in my pocket. And, I've... like, this one girl had said, like, uh, I had posted about it on Twitter. Like, this is so weird how this happened to me. And she's like, oh, your camera saw it. And I was like, but my phone was in my pocket. I've literally thought about this... babies before. And babies popped up on my phone. And then I Googled yeah. it, and I don't know where I read it, <laughs> but somewhere iPhone was doing some sort of technology where it was, like, trying to actually understand what you're thinking. I'm not joking. No That way. was in, like, 2015 or 2016. Yeah, so it's kind of old, but still so new. Like, <sighs> it's really interesting. It freaks me out. Like, I don't I don't consider anything out of the realm of possibilities. Honestly. Oh, no, like, absolutely. Anything's possible. Anything but it's still freaky. Possible. Like, Elon Musk is trying to do some fucking, like, Neuralink thing. Have you guys heard about that? No. Okay, I'm, I'm not the person, like you said, I'm not the person to give an explanation of this. But it's something, it's almost like the Internet 2.0. As to if where, the internet's not good enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> so where he argues now is like, like we're all cyborgs in in the aspect that like we're so connected to our phone that this is like an extension of us. This is like a piece of us. And uh, at this point. I mean, it's a part of our identity. It really is, which is I mean, really weird you, to think about. Like, if you didn't have your phone, who really are you? Like, I mean, if you didn't have your people to post for on Instagram, your friends on Twitter, your it's family on Facebook, please. You're just constantly in connection with everyone through that. And it's like you, I don't know. How are you going to communicate? How are you going to make plans? How are you going to do anything? How are you going to make friends? How are you going to find your boyfriend? Like, I thought, like, how, <laughs> how would you, you actually date if you didn't have a phone? Like, how would you meet people? I was switching from Sprint to AT&T, and I didn't have my phone for three hours because I had to, like, give my phone back to Sprint and then go to AT&T, and it was literally a sick joke. All of my stuff was saved on my phone. It was all in my Apple ID, and because I didn't have my actual phone, I couldn't log into anything, and every time I tried to reset it, it wanted to send it to one of my other devices. So it's like you almost have to have so many different devices to even be a freaking person and to have control of anything that you are, like. Like it's so ridiculous and it, this dependency is so new it's such a it's new so stage. new but it yeah. seems so like normal which is kind of scary because everybody scary. like doesn't seem to be phased by it but i'm still never i really don't know how i'd meet people going back to your question i don't know how i'd meet people i don't yeah. know that's a good question because i meet them online like a weird weirdo like approaching say if you're at a bar and try talking to someone or hitting on someone you'd almost feel like a creep because everyone meets through online these days literally everyone i love human connection though so like if you talk yeah. to me in person like there's a 10 out of 10 chance like i'm more interested in you just because you did that yeah like not because you sent me a message on instagram there's or snapchat or like Let's talk um, about snapchat scores i'm not in college she, she's not in college but like you, right you have now. maybe an easier chance of like you know meeting people through classes or at the library or this or that mm-hmm. uh, but still back to what we had said it'd be really hard to like meet people you definitely you make but even just doing that like you still need you still need some platform and then you extend off that platform like even if you don't have like a phone you have like facebook you know like some old people will at least have facebook the very least so they still have that form of communication to stay connected with all of their friends and family which that would have been so much like 15 years ago but now that's like the minimal form no, it's like at very least I have Facebook. <laughs> you can look me up there. Yeah, it's, it, you could definitely meet you, th- with with college. You want to like kind of I don't want to say penetrate, yourself. but you want to you want to get involved in certain social groups and then from there kind of extend your like networking. I guess you'd say. Uh-huh. But like part of doing that and a major key of doing that, and not just in college or anywhere, like any environment is going to be online and then kind of establishing an online presence and then. Do you think that's like the do you guys ever use that as like as females like as like the green light for dudes like maybe what do you mean? like uh, say for example you somehow get connected with a guy that you barely know online but like you're someone interested in them you and then you definitely... like their picture or something so that maybe it increases the probability that they either hit you up or next time you see for them in person sure. yeah, really for sure yeah like liking this way is the new way of saying hey i like you like, yeah. or it's like hey it's, you're hot you know, or like hey i'm interested or just just yeah. really anything which is also fucking but squirrely. i think it matters what time yeah. because if like you randomly like my pictures at like nine o'clock on a monday evening and i didn't post anything and you like like 15 obviously you're trying to get my attention but like say i post a picture and then you go and like like three what are you doing 
Like, are you just trying to get your attention across? Like, let you know that I you're interested in me, or? But that goes back to the amb- like the ambiguity of the intentions behind that like action, because you yeah. can interpret that so many ways. They're like, oh, he's just trying to fuck me. Oh, this person's trying to date me. Oh, this person just thinks I'm a cool person. Like, or it's like, or are they doing this to a bunch of other people too? Yeah, that too. Yeah. 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 Do but they I just want to be my friend? Like, what? What is it? I don't know. I feel like it's a crazy world we live in. 2019 coming at you. Okay, let's talk about the topic of like millennials and dating because I, I think about this all the time and like how. Actually, I'm gonna grab another beer before we talk about this. <laughs> I, I feel that. Yeah. Wait, I'm still good on mine. I'll keep it here just in case. Keeps you from getting up. Yeah. At least, some, at least somebody has it then. <laughs> all right, so. I mean, like we. I just wish. I wish we like could almost time travel just for the element of like. Do you think it's possible? How? how t- that's a whole I new time. <laughs> I, I have just no idea. Yes I'm, no. too, I'm maybe? too fucking stupid to know. I. You should just say maybe because anything's possible. That's what say I would say. Possible. Just the realm of possibility. They say they say time isn't linear. So maybe isn't if there we like could a different realm we don't know. I mean, there are different dimensions. They, Dimension. Uh, they're for apparently sure. like tw- up to like oh, I think I think well, they we thought it was we 12, twelve, and then now they think it's thirty. So I, oh my god, I yeah. feel like dimensions are just. I cannot beyond. wrap my head around dimensions. Yeah, I bet it's I bet it's more than thirty too. Like that, we just know of thirty, or however many. Do we really even know of thirty? Like, do we really know what we think we know? Probably not. But this life is crazy. Probably don't know that much. No, no. So back on. Millennials <laughs> and dating. No, I wish I could like time travel. To even just like our parents' generation, just to see a little like so different because they they're still like so similar, but so without the t- pretty much just like us without the technology. Like, mm-hmm. I, how would it be? Like, how is it more genuine? Because I feel like we like to assume it's more genuine, or like I feel like it's more slow. I feel like their lives were a lot more slow paced. Like back then, like I feel like dating one person or two people can like take such a long period of time, whereas now. You can date two people in one. You can be dating two days. like ten at one time. Well, not dating, but like talking to like ten different people. Whereas back all then, at once. Like, like you did not have that connection. Like talking to one person back then took all your energy. You had to send a letter or make sure your it just got across to them. Cause or you had a call at the right time when the parents said it was okay. When they like, got off yeah. the bus or something like. Yeah. So not even the bus. Like rode their horse home. It, <laughs> <laughs> so in your opinion, is this a good or a bad thing? Is I it good to have this many options so that you can like you ultimately get to select and choose what you want? You're not settling, or does it give you like a paradoxical kind of deal that you think it'd be more choices would be a good thing, but it's all it becomes a bad thing because then you just get like choice paralysis and you're just like, oh, uh, right, what the fuck always, do I do? Because yeah, there's always like the next best thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Always. you, but I'm super indecisive. I yeah. alone, like, I can walk in somewhere and, like, literally take, like, two hours looking at one aisle. Like, if I have more than, like, two options, I'm there for a while. So, yeah, yeah social media and, like, having all the options, it definitely is, it's so much. But, like, I feel like that goes back to communication and how well they communicate with you. Because like what keeps me interested isn't going to be like how hot you are or like all the hot people messaging me. It's going to be the quality of your attention. But But I think it's the quality of the conversation or like what they can bring to the table that would actually like get me to invest any time in them, you know? Totally. Like that's what I go off as well. Like I honestly, I, I'm one of the few guys who like rates it this way, but like, I feel like, like you said, like, like the initial thing that catches attention is like looks it's like everybody's then, beautiful to some extent. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. Like, like those Except for fat people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the special section for that. Just kidding. No. Uh, <laughs> everybody's beautiful. No, I mean, I feel like, it, yeah, like it, they, like if you're like sexually attracted to them, then they're going to catch your attention initially. And then from beyond there, it's like more like the connection or like the actual like personality. And it's even nicer yeah. whenever you're like not even so attracted to them, but you're attracted to like who they are and then you meet them and then like all of the attraction comes. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot. More That's so rare of, too. Yeah, it is rare, but I feel like it definitely happens. I feel like pictures can be really deceiving too, especially with Photoshop. Yeah. Just like Kenna was saying earlier, like you, we, we get to choose what we show. And mm-hmm. we're going to show the best and we're going to distort that image. It's always to... the best image of ourselves. Like, you know, you know. What's weird is I feel like I don't even give myself that luxury. I keep all my favorite photos like in my camera log. 
And I'm always like stressing about, you know, I take so many, I don't know which one I want to post. Which one do the people want to see? Do they want to see the one that I want to post or do they want to see this other one? I think this is just my personal take, but I think you should do you, Morgan. That's I think true. you should do you. I appreciate just, that. And then whoever fucks with you, fucks with you. Exactly. The right people mm-hmm. always fall into place. Exactly. Even if it doesn't seem that way. But back to what we were talking about earlier about like our parents' generation versus our generation. Like I feel like it's so nice now having all these options, but at the same time, the connection I feel like was way more genuine back then. Like I feel like it was. Um, Unless you find somebody know. who kind of has the same mentality as you, mm-hmm. you know, then maybe, maybe the connection can be good. I feel like back then they really had to work for it, and that's what made it a beautiful thing. That I feel like now really you try. almost have to work for it, because not only are you competing with a million people, but, like, I don't know, literally you're just competing with a million people. Like, your phone could be blowing up a million. I don't know, you could have 50 people messaging you. Like, it's, like, way more trust. Yeah. And like it, it, I feel and like you kind of have to be deeper, like, in a sense, but also you're not as close. I don't know. It's really contradicting. It's like you have to be deeper because you have to like know that like all these people ain't shit and that you guys really fuck with each other, Mm -hmm. not kind of like let everything get to you. And also like understand that the the benefits of each other are going to outweigh the uh, benefits of like all these randoms. Yeah. Trying something else. It's It's all about experience, but like it's like difficult to trust, I feel, because and or harder to trust now than it would have been because of all these options because somebody just could just jump ship like so much it's easier so easy, yeah. especially like i i don't yeah. know like not like to you said with your friend like they went on vacation and two weeks later bam 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 like exactly like yeah. people's way of like saying i'm not interested in you you anymore is ghosting like just like not talking to you not i don't like that i don't, like I don't that. either i'd rather have an explanation because it's like i'm a very we're humans. I feel like we to last to person, so it's like it, the least you can say is just like, "Hey, I'm not really feeling this anymore," rather than you know just ignoring me because nothing. And this is my explanation. Ignored. Here you go. Yeah, but like you said, easier said than done, and it doesn't happen that often. Like people just find it easier to quit responding to you than they would to actually step up and be a man or a woman about it and say something. I feel like people try to avoid connection because yeah. of it. Definitely avoid communication. <laughs> Which is so stupid. Yeah, it's sad. So sad. I really like it's how these have, like, money on it, like the money symbol. I like that, too. That's what's up. I kind of wish it was, like, a... I feel like I would save them if they had like they were, like, a special edition. Yeah. I feel like this I've is never like seen them with green. Token. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if that's like a like an age thing too. Like if it's like people are quicker to jump ship just because they want to explore their options right now because we're still like in this dating kind of partying like having fun phase, or if it has to do with like social media. I feel yeah. like a lot of people used to get married and like have kids at like sixteen back in the day. I feel like we're really not as young as we think we are. That's a good point. That's I mean, a really good point. My grandparents were married at eighteen, exactly. living over in fucking Italy. Exactly, and they're starting their life working full time. My like, grandparents got pregnant at like sixteen. Like you know, most of them didn't even finish school because they were pregnant. I feel like it's really been our generation. It's yeah. weird to think that we're like the guinea pigs for it, but we are. Yeah. But I feel like it's really been us, and like our parents were kind of like a prerequisite to us. Like they're kind of a little bit more like scandalous, ruthless than our p- grandparents, but also. It's crazy when you think about so our bi- biology as women. Like we fucking get our periods when we're like twelve. And it's like, uh, we're exactly. not supposed to be having sex at this age, <laughs> but yet we're getting our period. Like, like, what is this These for? are our prime years, like, able to reproduce and, like, have children. But yeah, And then you get to yeah. a certain age, and once you try, like, it's basically pointless because your body's so old. It's like, yeah, no, it's like, you can't oh, have Menopause. Of you. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, apparently Hitler was into, like, young women, like, 16-year-olds. So was Elvis Presley. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Elvis <laughs> Presley had a 16-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. what dudes like. Dudes like youthfulness and appearance. Yeah. Youthful facial like features. I think that will more. always, always be a thing. Like, as long as women are young and pretty. I don't know about you, but I still feel 16, so I totally feel it. Like, <laughs> how come I, st- I know that I'm not? <laughs> I'm definitely going to be that old lady looking at those young high school boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like I'll see some young kids and, like, realize, like, I'm not that age. Like, it's yeah. very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like nope it's probably natural though it's probably yeah. natural but still it's just weird to like see other kids like 16 or whatever and kind of like be like hmm. like feel like kind of close to them because i feel the same but also like realize like wow you are not that person anymore you yes. totally surpass this uh -huh. just thinking how different we are from like 16 to how we are now it's like oh god <laughs> <laughs> we were that was even that long ago that I wasn't know. that long it ago. feels like forever ago <laughs> how old are you I'm 23. 23? Right on. How, are you, how old so, are you, Tail? 21 and 21 and almost one hour. And 51 hey. minutes. 51 minutes. <laughs> That's funny because they, they asked me before coming over. They're like, how old is she? And I'm like, honestly, if I had to guess, I'd say 21. And so I was right. Cool. Yeah, you were. That's one thing is lying in the club. And then whenever whenever you walked in, I was like, how old is she? <laughs> 16. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I was at Menards and this lady asked me like, Basically, she didn't think I had enough money to pay for my stuff because I looked so young. And she <laughs> thought I was in high school. She literally thought I was 16. I was like, um, I'm almost 21. But thanks. Sorry, and I work full time. Crack. Uh, <laughs> I will remain in this good skin forever. Mean that is one thing you. that's I'm really starting to think is true. It's like, thank God for my ancestors. Cause yeah, you won't crack. Do you guys ever get scared? Like, you, well, you made a comment earlier about like your peak years, like mm -hmm. as like a girl. Like, I don't appreciate myself enough. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Like, this is my prime. <laughs> this is the peak. Like, uh -huh. yeah. I don't know. I don't appreciate myself. Like, I feel like people are kind of stuck in the past or kind of in the future, kind of where they want to be or where they have been. They're never actually living in the moment. Which, I feel like I do that way too often. Let me add that book, The New Earth, has taught me the past and the present are nothing. I mean, yeah, the past and the future are nothing but thoughts in your head. The only thing that matters is truly what's going on right now at this moment. And like, how often do we actually live in the moment? Like, we're living in the moment now because we're all podcasting, like, not on our phones. But, like, normally, every day... Yeah, you're like, normally when thinking we? about like, oh, when like I'm supposed to be doing this or this or this with my life. Like, I wish I was here, but I'm not. And I'm you like see here. other people doing better than you or worse mm -hmm. than you. You kind of hold yourself to other standards and kind of lose track of who you actually yeah. are, what you're doing, what you're capable of. We are at such a weird age because you know we got friends getting married, we got friends like still partying. Like, we are at such an interesting age. And we get to see it all on social media, and we're comparing ourselves to it constantly. Yeah. And I, I agree with you 100. percent It is. It's that's a funny or not funny. It, I guess it's kind of funny because then you, you don't take it as seriously. But uh, it's kind of sad. All the, all the past is is memory. Like their memories there for you to be able to retain and learn from and grow from. And then all the future is is imagination that yeah. you can prepare for. Mm -hmm. And it, they're like completely intangible. And like you said that. They're nothing but thoughts. And it, I love how you brought up podcasting as well because that, th like I was saying it's before like this. It's something you can do to live in the moment. I yes. Think. And that's what I'm always chasing and creating in my life is those those experiences of. New connections. New connections. But just in the things that take me into the moment the most. And podcasting is a prime example of that. Playing soccer for me. I like jujitsu a lot. Like that's. Oh. That's really a very in the moment thing because you have to be like constantly reacting, adapting. Literally, you have no time to plan. It's just like whatever happens, happens. Absolutely. It's like all up to you. And it, those those times are just I don't know. That's just the the best of times. Good conversations. I feel like people because of social media and stuff like get so caught up in like their only activities are scrolling through their phones. They don't have hobbies. They don't want to like listen to even podcasts. Like even we said, like take away their phone. What do they really have? It's like you could take my phone away and send me off to a mountain and I would be thriving. Yeah. But like a lot of these people, you send them off, they'd be dead in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> like they would not like survive. Like you said, their hobbies are scrolling. Their hobbies are scrolling at the TV shows they watch. I literally yeah. was so tired the other day. I was asleep. Like I was consciously asleep, but I was scrolling. Like I woke up to myself scrolling. I wasn't even holding my phone. Like. I don't know. It really hit me then. That's like, some addictive. like zombie shit. I know. It's like, why yeah. am I like that? That would scare me. That would scare me. I was literally me. so freaked out. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Like, yeah. I had no reason to be on my phone. My phone was like right next to me. And I'm like, that's cool. You read New Earth, though. I, I've read like half of that, I, I think. I don't, but I, he has another book that I, I honestly, I'm a hating on like a New Earth. Like, that was, I thought that was decent. But his other book called, um, B, or fuck, uh, 
The Power of Now. The Power, power of now. now. Ooh, I've heard of that I'm one. Done. I would highly yeah. recommend it. Like, I'm going to reread it for sure. I've read it twice or two and a half, or one and a half times so yeah, far, and it's the it's new great. Earth, I've read it two times already, and anytime I'm in the car or just like stressed up, uh, stressed out about something, I'll just put that on or put on like my favorite part of him, and it's just like I am back to where I should be. I Respect. Think, yeah. I think they should like the Power of Now. Yes. Yes. I want to this is this is a random the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. You would like it as well. I am so I'm sad. I didn't t- know who you were talking about earlier. I'm so I bad at names. Book. So like when people throw names at me, I'm like, I don't <sighs> want to say yes or no yet. <laughs> let me let me Google it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Here's a weird thought for you. So I I feel like I feel like I've kind of found this self from me. But one of my favorite things about I guess you'd say like feminine energy. Like I, I just I one of my favorite things of just uh-huh. that I love being around is that for whatever reason I feel like women are way they find like a more spiritual like grounded root like like I feel like women are more into meditation and these could all just be like assumptions I have in my own head but like I feel like women get into that stuff more than men do I and feel like guys I find it like and like they just don't don't think that it's manly enough to or be like maybe it hurts their masculinity or yeah, something like, but or i just feel like they feel um, threatened almost like i don't know i feel like because of society now like if you are a man and you're into stuff like that you're kind of seen as weak when i don't really think that i feel like you are like way more in touch with your mind like i'll go to yeah. yoga and like there will be like guys in there by themselves like and that's the best thing to me like even older guys i'm like yes you yes. come here you put yourself through this and like you feel good after but like some guys are like oh no that's lame like that's for girls but like is it really lame Taking Why care of yourself. Guys, They've probably never tried it before, yeah. by the way. Exactly. Why do you feel guys are not in tune, like, is in tune with that? Do you, f- do you think it's, do you think guys are too, I could be wrong here, maybe, maybe they're too focused on, like, pursuing things in the future, and, like, I feel like guys yeah. are very about achievement based. I feel like, and, like you guys have the mind, you guys are the mind, but, like, women are, like, the action, like, you guys are the image, and we like do everything behind it, you know? Creatures. Like, women we have, like, the brains, verbal. and you're the beauty. I don't know. Like they're like the face, and then like here I, we are. Wait, elaborate on this thought more. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious what you mean. Like because like we're more spiritual and grounded. I feel like we're able to think more in depth in certain situations, whereas guys see more broadly. Like they're just looking at like the very surface layer stuff. Whereas like you can give us all your crazy ideas, and we can really dig deep on it. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I feel so, like there's a great woman behind every man, maybe. I love that quote. I, I heard that like for the first time recently. I yeah. agree. I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's bad it's, at all. Like it's really awesome. I think women are definitely underrated. I feel like I par- partially, I agree with that. I agree with that. And I honestly, like, um, no, I grew up with like sisters and whatnot. Yeah. And so you're so probably always, way better how than many most dudes. sisters Pos- do you have? I have two younger sisters, and then I was definitely, I spent more time with my mom than my dad. Like me and my dad are pretty close too, but like I've, I've say I'm, probably close with my mom yeah probably if i had to choose I feel like boys are already kind of like like you know mama's boys but like girls are like daddy's girls because i was definitely so much closer with my dad than i was, I was my definitely mom. a mom's girl i don't know me and my mom were just like spitting images of each other so that can also be the case that was so yeah. weird but like i don't know i feel like guys who grow up with sisters are always better just because i feel like they kind of understand, you know. I've spent a lot of time waiting on women. Yeah, I would always wait in the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. I, like, yes. I get it. It's I nothing get it. New for you, yeah. like, but guys who like have brothers or something, I feel like they're kind of like super like macho. Kind of have to have that like front, like kind of be better than everybody, which is kind of overwhelming. Now that you say, yeah, I have some good friends that like they only had brothers growing up, and I've I've noticed that I understand some things that they just simply don't get at yeah, this point yeah. in life, at least. Like, yeah, and that is funny. That is funny. Do you like when's your birthday? Uh, which uh, wait, well, one one side note on that. I feel okay. like something I do really well, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here. But something I do, at least I try to do, is like and excuse uh, me. Uh, I thought he was yelling at me. I don't know. I don't know who that is. I can't recognize that voice. <laughs> uh, I don't know why he's yelling. It sounds like he's talking on the phone. But anyway, uh, oh, something something I at least attempt to do. This is like something I definitely like strive for. Is that and I don't think a lot of guys do this. And I think a lot of my guy friends, they have this weird thing with girls to where they don't treat them as just fucking people. 
And kind of like treat them as I don't like, know like how I'm I don't fully understand women. Like I'm not gonna sit here and like I don't think women understand women. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> we definitely don't understand ourselves. But like I I don't know they like go up and they just present this like alter ego and they like completely change. But I I feel like what I try to do is. Yeah, I, I switch up a little bit. I will admit that. I feel like everybody kind of has to put on a front at first because you never really know who you're coming into. True. So like, I but feel like, 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 with, like I, I try to just treat women as people, and I feel like not many guys do that. And I don't know if you guys would agree with that or definitely would agree. Like definitely. guys definitely have to, um, I don't know, I to like treat us as lesser, to feel superior. I guess maybe. I, I feel know. like it is to kind always of about have being the upper hand. Like I said, men are very physical creatures. Women are very verbal. Do you think? Like, do you think? I feel like that's a very like hegemonic, like dominant, like hyper dominant. I think that dynamic. goes back in history, though. Mm-hmm. Like men have always kind of been superior, quote unquote. But like women like to be submissive, right? Uh, like it's like yeah, sure, but also like we don't want to be undermined either. Like we're not stupid. We're totally people. Like, like we, we want to be, be treated like people. We don't want to be too controlling mm-hmm. or we have to, you know, be I feel a little like people bit balance each other out though. So yeah. like finding a masculine figure that kind of like puts in that extra energy that you don't really like, you kind of match up. But like definitely when you meet people, I always like to ask if they have siblings or maybe when their birthday is just cause I feel like it really does match up. Like I see a lot of the same things in people when I ask those questions. Are you into like astrology? I really am. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's bullshit, to be honest. I think There's it's always all bullshit. Those people. Really? I I, yeah. I I I don't know. I just don't believe in it personally. But you never did tell me. I when think your it's birthday very was. like coincidential. Ten twenty five, nineteen ninety five, and I agree. Ten twenty five. So I think you're it's very Scorpio? coincidental. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. could see that. <laughs> I like That's what you, everybody though. says. They're like, oh, I, I could. I don't know. <laughs> You're like a good Scorpio. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good Scorpio. I'll drink to that. That's funny. Oh, yeah. I totally like if you like astrology is so diverse. Like you have to really dig in deep. If you look at your fucking basic chart, like you're not gonna think that. Like no but like there's 12 planets and there's a sign for each planet and each planet rules a different part of your emotions and a different part of your thought process and shit so like if you really look into that you might be a scorpio but you could be a libra in your fucking mercury or some shit could have a cancer moon and be super emotional yeah you never really know unless you do all the work to find out and then it's like holy shit this makes all sense but like if you just look at it it's like no this is what the fuck this is just making money for people to download this app but is there even anything as a self? Is there any such thing as you? Well, now you're getting to ask two <laughs> intricate of questions. Like, your birthday's the day what is the <laughs> earth could no longer go without you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, your, your like, chart is literally like the exact moment you come out into the universe. Like, you, the moment you're exposed. But does any developmental stages have to do anything with that? Like, when you were conceived? I don't think so. Not that I found, but I'm sure maybe some people that are super way deep in that shit might know. But I definitely haven't. I know, like, the time and place, definitely, because it's, like, your exact coordinate. But as far as, like, when you're conceived, I don't think that matters. But it is interesting to find out what your parents are. Have you ever heard of the, like, conceived story from your parents, like, the what stork? they were doing? That's oh. so funny you said that because I, I, I was a little fucking savage when I was growing up, and, and I think it was like some sometime in high school. I don't remember we have when. A Scorpio over but here. I was going to <laughs> at my parents on Facebook. I did, I ended up not following through with this because I was like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do this. But I was going to at them and be like, hey, mom and dad, uh, when was I conceived? And then just leave it at that, like as a public it's Facebook. Like, I would have said how, yeah. how was I conceived? Like, tell me how. I know I was yeah, conceived yeah. during like squirrel season outside. My parents yeah. got raw and had, you know, squirrel season. Sex. What do you yeah. mean squirrel season? Whatever squirrel <laughs> fuck season is. Uh, <laughs> we lived in the middle of nowhere, so I'm sure squirrel season was every day. Uh, That's hilarious. But yeah, they boned out in the woods, and then boom, McKenna came along. So probably around May, yeah. June area, because you're a December baby in the woods. Was yeah. that like a frequent thing, or not to get I too deep know. on your uh, your parents' <laughs> intimacy here? But it sounds like it. it. Sounds like they, you know, took it outside a lot. <laughs> not out in the parking lot, but took it outside. I'm a doctor, <laughs> so I definitely don't need to know that. It is a uh, wilderness. Yeah. 
very raw. <laughs> Would you guys ever move off the grid? Would I? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. Is that a question? This is something Who I'm wouldn't? very personal I would do that too. about. Like, Who wouldn't, um, though? Like, come on. Like, zero waste and minimalism and just learning how to, like, self-sustain without, like, needing help is a very, like, cool thing to me. Like, learning how to grow your own vegetation, learning about your own water systems. Like, just learning how to This is stuff they should teach you society. growing up. Yeah. Because, like, you, what you really need to know is how to survive as a human being. Not yeah. survive as a human being in a civilization. Like, obviously... Like, obviously, you need to know that, but, like, maybe, like, your primary years, just learning how to be a person and, like, live on your own. Because what if we don't have all this technology? What if we lose everything? We're all screwed because none of us got taught it. <laughs> none of us. I don't know. But you could also argue from, like, a conspiracy point of view that, like, <sighs> why would they want us to know? Like, why would they want us they to know? They don't want if, us to know, and that's assuming exactly why they, we don't. <laughs> assuming they want us dependent on the system, as dependent as we can possibly be, why would they want us to know any of that? They don't. Because then yeah. that's that's independence and that's lack of dependency upon them. Mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, them why, assuming like, like, like society or whatever you want to say. I will forever yeah. be grateful I grew up in Missouri just for the simple fact that I'm kind of a hillbilly. Like, <laughs> I'm a little I bit redneck. I guess we redneck. know the simpler times. Like, we know simpler ways. We like, grew up with, like, nothing. We're so behind everybody. Like Yeah, when you, like, go other places, like, I'm in so the mind United blown States, still. it feels like Missouri is, like, 10 or 15 years behind society. It's like, wow, I did not grow up with people like this. Like, his open-minded people are just, like, I feel so different. accepted other places. Yeah. Where, you get, where have you guys been? A lot of places. I've been Texas, Colorado, Florida. Chicago, I've been those places, all the, like, California states to get there. Yeah, every I, state uh, in between here in California. Ooh, Yellowstone was by far the like most amazing place I've ever I've been. I've never been. It I is literally go. phenomenal. I would die to live there. Where I would literally give been? my life. You can actually like Wait, work there. Where have you been? I've I did a, like a big backpacking trip. I had these two Australian buddies that I was really good friends with, and I did a big backpacking trip from here, and then pretty much covered all of like up up all the way until California. Holy wow. shit. So like Albuquerque, uh, Vegas, uh, and, and you all three live? of the main cities. That's where you live with nothing, but except for what's in your bag, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. And so I'm, did I'm, you walk beautiful. a lot of it, or it, did you beautiful. like get rides? Uh, so we like we met these German chicks in uh, actually off the side of the road at this really random spot, and then we we ended up we were like, hey, we're getting rid of our car. In Vegas, if you guys want to meet up in Vegas and then like give us a ride to San Diego, do what? Did you sell the car? Like, how'd you get rid of it? They actually bought the car and then they they uh, got rid of it. But we we rented it from Colorado Springs, which was really dope because I actually I uh, this Springs. is like one of the Colorado craziest things I ever did. But I spent the night in a cave with a random guy. That's like, so phenomenal. I know. Yeah, and like after hiking morning. like ten miles that day, I hiked up this mountain and then I'm like Alone? sitting. Yeah, yeah. I, my Australian buddy wouldn't come with me. No, my phone died. And oh. I was out of water at this point. Oh, my God. So I was, like, super desperate. I was, like, I got up to the top of the mountain. I was, like, fuck. Like, so you this was not a good it. idea. Like, this was, like, a stupid idea. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm, like, I shouldn't have done this. And then I'm, like, sitting on this bench. I was so liberating. And I was, like, because I've always been somebody, I like, if I want to do something, I just fucking go after it. And, like, that's what I wanted to do because I. Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> That's funny. Uh, no, I just, I was just like, honestly, like, this is something I want to try. I want to try sleeping in a cave. When am I going to be able to try this again? That's so so that's what I, and then this dude, I just meet him on the top of the mountain. He's like an ex meth addict. He lives with his dad. He's 35. He's a self proclaimed ninja. He's in these weird fucking conspiracies. Ninja? Right on. And then we end up spending the night in a cave and he gets me fresh water from this like mountain water. That's so great. Wow. That is so That's great. That's quite the Where experience. was he heading? <laughs> is that crazy? Where was he heading, and how did you get out of there? He was just hiking at 1 a.m. in the morning for no fucking reason. I guess that's ex tweaker shit. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, know. I think he was That's just bored. awesome. And then, so long story short, uh, we after that night, I walked home, and I guess my our Airbnb host saw how, like, bad condition i was in and felt bad for us and then she ended up signing off on the car because you have to be over 25 and my friend was only 23 or 24 at the time <sighs> so we weren't old enough to sign off and i was only 20 i was only 20 at the time yeah so i was like shit like i i We're guess screwed. uh yeah i guess i'm screwed right now <laughs> so like I'm walking so she ends up forward. signing off on it for us and then we drive that car all the way from we hit like a ton of national parks probably like 10 to 15 national parks 
and then I'm down to drive it to Albuquerque Anytime. and to Vegas. Those were the only cities we went to. But I made my dad drive me to California once. It was the best experience ever. You just made him, and he's like, "No, I was visiting a friend, but like, we definitely drove, and it was the cool. It was like the first time I had ever seen anything other than Missouri, other than flying to Florida. So it was definitely insane. We've seen the Grand Canyon. We stopped at like the Grand Tetons or Tetons or whatever. And um, wait, what is that? I've definitely heard of that. Yeah, it's some. Um, it's a national park. I don't have any pictures because I broke my phone on the trip. Oh, I've literally broken bummer. my phone on every trip I've gone on mm-hmm. and, like, lost all the pictures. But, I don't know, the Grand Canyon. And then we also seen, like, some red park or something. How but long were you great. backpacking? It was only a three-week venture. That you remember sounds Kyle? so amazing, though. I'm going to Europe. Mm-hmm. He backpacked That's, that's my goal after college because I'm like, okay, like, if I'm, if I'm like, graduating and starting – I feel like everybody I play soccer, Europe. so I feel like I can meet a ton of people doing that. And it's, I feel like it's the most similar yet simultaneously going to be extremely different than the United States. And I know a fair amount of European culture in comparison to like anywhere else in the world. Really? I, I feel like it was either Europe or it was Australia, and there's way more to do in Europe. Mm-hmm. And once Australia, you get you'd over probably there, die from some random disease you don't know yeah, about. Yeah, right, right. Literally, you would. Or some random scorpion yeah. that, like a bug bite of some random crazy bug yeah but i figured europe was like because i've heard once you get over there and then like you kind of go around like i met this girl all like flights included and everything she said the flight over was 700 and then back was 700 she was there for two months and she did it all on 5,000. Oh my god so like that's 1400 that? deducted from that and then two months so what it was that, like three thousand six hundred dollars for two months if you don't eat fast food there. which i hope they don't have a lot of it over there and you're like smart i think you could totally do it and if you have like the resources and like the time hell yeah you guys should do it too honestly best. why not why not i feel like you're probably your i'm trying to be at my you job don't have two years. any possessions on you and you have nothing more than what's in your fucking bag to live off, live off of like i think that's a very beautiful thing like you live more through experiences rather than you know through material objects or things that you think that are going to make you happy that really don't it seems like that minimal what was the name of that minimalism book um, is not necessarily a book. It's a girl I listen to on uh, YouTube. Her channel's Pick Up Limes, and she's taught me a lot about minimalism and just like living, you know, having more of a fulfilling life with less, like you know, having the bare fucking minimum. That's awesome. And she also backpacked through Europe for like two years, and like you know, she had all these crazy stories. Europe, she met her that. husband so through hard. that. Like it was just a very beautiful thing, and it's just like this is what I would love to do. Sometimes. I've heard of stories like that. People mean like significant others. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Because that, that's my goal. Is I I'm gonna go over there with X amount of money. You're gonna meet was... the love of your life, and you're gonna live happily ever after. Exactly. Literally. Exactly. exactly. That is the ultimate Make goal in life. During squirrel season. <laughs> <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> Does Europe have woods? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. I think the Netherlands would be so amazing. She actually lives in the Netherlands right now. Really? No way. Uh, I wish. Nadia Stavia. Oh, I yeah. just she is from Canada, was a dietitian and Canada? Um, Why would she leave Canada? No, she lived in Canada, had her really good job. She just had finished school and then she decided she wanted more from her life and decided to go backpacking in Europe. I definitely am gonna do that before yeah. I die. It was a very beautiful Which is thing. in my in my philosophy. So with that being said, like if you want to think about life, like write your obituary now, or like write like what think oh, about on your I deathbed, like what are you that. gonna regret? Like, th- like think about it from the perspective of when you are dying on your deathbed, you're looking at all your family. Like you're not gonna be, you're not gonna re- regret what you did. Like you're gonna regret what you didn't do. So like, I'm what do you everything. think you're gonna regret if you don't? It, like when you get to that point yeah. that, that's how i like to like make decisions like this and my philosophy is like yo i'm gonna regret the fuck out of this if i don't at least just try it so is yeah. your family from here are you from Missouri? Uh, no I'm from st louis yeah st. Louis. but like do all your family like live around there uh yeah yeah okay well you're kind of far away so you're probably not too hard on yourself about it i'm like way too attached to my family in the sense that like i'm afraid to move away too far but I also know that, like, I'm super young and in my prime and I, this is the time to do it. And they're always telling me to. 
like go out and do whatever I want but I'm also like so conflicted with wanting to stay close to them just in case something bad happens you know are you gonna regret it if you don't I'm not sure if I'll regret it if I don't or if I'll regret it if I do I always just feel like they're gonna be waiting for me when I get back I would like, love to think that but you that's know, how I, yeah I like that thought off. yeah like I have bad luck they're only a phone call away Granted, you have your phone. I'm trying to be somewhere lost in the mountains. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my phone if I leave. <laughs> I want to get well, a flip phone and so call it quits. What about this? What about this? Where do you think, what decision is going to lead to the most like personal growth? If that's assuming that's what Leaving. you want to, like, is that what you desire? Like, do you yes. want to be? I desire nothing you more be? than to leave. Not oh, even... what? What? Wait, 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 what? What's your reasoning for wanting to leave? Well, I definitely don't think I was supposed to be here. I definitely was supposed to like grow up here, but I don't think this is where I'm. So it's to it's up. what you want to do, but why aren't you doing it? That, that's to be an Family, asshole. Family, like I feel like I have to put them first, even though I don't. Are th- are these excuses or is this fear or? <sighs> definitely excuses. <laughs> Gosh. But I mean, they're good excuses and they're they're value like they're very like, valid excuses. Like they're fucking real. Like your yeah. your family is everything. But are they holding you back? I don't know. Oh, dang, or just the yeah, thought of are. like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're being real too. Way too real. Mm. Oh, that's just my thoughts. Because like right now we're probably going to be at minimal responsibilities. And like hypothetically so. you get serious with somebody or like you have a kid or I don't know. I, I that, That's just my thoughts. Dog. Yeah. It, maybe. May, I, I, this is like. This is one of those things that I'm like, this is something I've tried and I sound like an asshole, but it's, it's provided value to my life. So it's like a recommendation, but maybe even if you want the male perspective, female perspective, whatever, I, I personally like sought out the like male perspective, but maybe look up like, like how do you free. think, how do you think the right way to spend your twenties is get that advice from somebody in their thirties or forties or somebody like later on down the road. And like, Getting anxiety this is, thinking this about is how I wish I would have lived ever got from any person at the club. They say, get out while you can like get out now or else you're going to regret it. So it's really, like, yeah. Do you respect those opinions? I do. Then do it. You should do it. You should right? do it. Uh, my lease is coming up in July and it's like nothing here is holding me back. Deuces. I have a dog, but he can come anywhere I go. Right. Like, he likes to travel. He likes to run. <laughs> yeah. And there, if you want to like do anything like traveling related, there the are resources like online. Like I, I literally spent. Uh, it was a Airbnb few weekends is back. Thing ever, by the way. Yes, it's so cool. It's so cool. It hostels in Europe, like they're huge. You can spend for like ten bucks a night. Like really? it not uh, let's just say fifteen, but like s- apparently it's so fucking there, cheap. If you look at like explore the world on Airbnb, like there's dirt cheap places, and it's like you can oh, like you stay in like community like, housing. Yeah. And you also can get, like, a host that was willing to show you around the town, like, willing that's to, dope. like, do lots of cool things for you. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. I think I I've think always wanted... Can, uh, that's a, the more beautiful thing about social media is, like, being connected to, like, people, like, through, you know... That's one thing I think is really beautiful about it is just that simple fact. I really want to, like, like, pick up an and move to and California can... and work on, like, a farm. Like, a dispensary farm or, like, a just anything. Actually, one of my like most recent, I think it was my the second one before this. My my buddy, he he was in Washington, really? but he worked in a in a farm or he called it a five hundred one hundred two farm or something. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. It's some, I know some somebody numbers. last just, week like, who just moved out to California just to go work for like doing hydraulics for a marijuana farm out there. Really? Yeah. Wow. I yeah. know somebody who's that like labor? trimming and stuff. Huh? Is that labor? Uh, he does like a lot of the like technical stuff of it like it's all through a computer like you know through a computer this plant will tell you oh it needs this more water this much or this and this that's dope as fuck wow it's like irrigation yeah (laughs) wow i didn't even know that existed integrity farms i mean hydraulics yeah yeah Yeah. i know somebody who's like trimming and doing stuff like that and i would love to trim like why not apparently the girls are like the trimmers and the guys are like the growers yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly he's it. he said he was digging like deep ass holes and he said it was hard labor oh like, i can't hard only labor. imagine Damn. <laughs> like, that would suck but yeah, you'd be so Jared, buff by the end of it more and stuff. The typical stuff of it but it's still so really cool thing yeah literally yeah buff from a weed farm yeah 
Missouri needs to get with the program. You guys should make it happen. I'm, like, super encouraging of this. You guys are, like, very – at least my kind of first impressions, yeah. Yeah. Like, you guys seem like very, um, like, free-spirited people. Like, very free-spirited. I'm so free-spirited, but I'm the one who needs a plan. She's more – She knows I'll just fucking get up where the wind goes. Would you guys do it together? For we sure. could totally do that. In my opinion, that's like the best matchup because like I, I don't I don't know shit about traveling, but what I found See, is I like, love to know to, stuff about traveling. But she's like more free spirited and like willing to go. That's places perfect though, because then she's I'm gonna bring. To just have a plane ticket ready without any means on like what I'm gonna do when I get fucking there. Fucking right. Like, oh hell yeah. I'm yeah. like no, like, I'm planning what we're doing. In respect yeah. to that too. <laughs> respect to that too. No, honestly, like she's a planner. I'm. I guess. What I'm if gonna, like go get her. Like yeah. you, you could make the plans on your traveling trips, make some plans, and then you would bring spontaneous shit into that. Like you, that's like, like the perfect the duo. You guys are like <laughs> both between. extremes, and you'll meet somewhere in the middle. That's literally how it's always been. <laughs> like that's that's the fucking perfect duo. I I'm trying to persuade you right now. If you can't tell. You definitely to... are making it really hard. <laughs> that's for sure. If I wasn't so lazy and didn't like to not walk, <laughs> well, wouldn't want to walk in the blazing heat. Because it's Missouri. I kind of got a totally little bit of a limp now, but, like, I can still limp. You know, <laughs> pimp my walk. <laughs> my way there. Even, like, a bicycle would be cool. Yeah. Um, I'd be down to drive anywhere, but, like. Amsterdam is known as, like, the cycling city. And it's, like, everyone there rides bicycles. And that's oh, that's cool. That's a cool thing. Yeah. I would love that. I bet a lot of places, are, at least bikes, are, like, practical. Mm-hmm. It's more s- sustainable. Like, I mean, as far as, Most like, DOT. No gas is yeah. coming out of a bike. Is the mission I went to Chicago, like, a year ago, and I just rode my bike around. Or, like, we rented bikes. Yes, me for too. For probably, like, four Did hours. Did you ride you done around that? Lake Michigan? Like, yes, like see it is how so blue it was? Like, I could not get over how blue the water was there. And some it's like, blue-ass blue blue? water. Yeah. It real looks some like blue it looks water. fake. It looks fake because it's like, how is that? So they blood? don't put color in yeah. it. Yeah. They don't. No. Somebody needs to verify because yeah. I don't believe it. Do you guys know who Cody Ko is? Mm-mm. Okay. Long, he, long story short, he's like a Vine. He's like one of those people on Vine who got famous and then he like transferred his audience over to YouTube. But he, he makes fun of like all these people that present themselves on social media <laughs> in one of his videos as like their lives being this insane traveling experience mm-hmm. and this constant party. And he's like, he's making fun of it. He's like, why the fuck? Are all these people surrounded by some blue ass water? <laughs> like I've never <laughs> seen water that fucking blue. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> that <laughs> is that blue? But that was my favorite thing I did in Chicago was we rented bicycles and I was like, we're just gonna bicycle everywhere. We rode like twelve miles that day and like had no idea we had went that far just because we just stayed bicycling our happy asses. Were around. they the kind like, that like you use your credit card for and stuff? Yeah, you slip in a card. The the blue you know? ones. Yeah. Those are, yeah. It There's some dope. yellow ones in that Dallas. You can get paid to, like, keep them overnight and charge them. And I heard get they're going to get a cycling system here in Springfield. So they we'll really should. Really? Yeah. so nice. Oh, that, that, this is a great city for it. This really yeah. is. Honestly, like, that was, this might sound like I'm a boring person, but, like, that is that was one of my favorite life experiences. Just fucking riding a bike in downtown Chicago. No worries in the world. Like, it was it mine so too. Fun. I have so many videos because I was just like, "Yeah, this is living. This is what life should be. Like, really, this is great. Yeah, no responsibilities, nothing." Yeah. I was actually I was taking videos, so I was like recording. So I'd be like taking a video here and then um, pretending that I was on my phone, it, at least for the video. And while I'm like riding the bike, and I'd be like, "No, mom, I said I wanted." mayonnaise not ranch <laughs> fuck you like like you i'm like see some, people like look at you like what <laughs> like, some arrogant ass kid like yeah. fuck like, this guy like, i'm who glad are you you've to? done that too because that's a beautiful thing you've done that <laughs> no like as far as like the cycling thing <laughs> oh yeah totally yeah. <laughs> pretended to be but you said mom. you were 20 <laughs> when you had done backpacking so that was really cool yeah that was like that was a it was a life changing experience, especially doing it with those Australian guys, because um, one of them was more of like a creative. Like he was very the way I like to describe him is very abstractly intelligent, like highly highly just philosophically intelligent. He was he was very smart in his own way, and then the other was extremely pragmatic, like very logical thinker. Mm-hmm. So. Long story short, these guys are very different people, and they didn't like each other because they 
they were always associated as like the Australian boys, and then they would clash heads and they got kind of competitive while they were there that <laughs> like semester. Both effing there can only be one. That was like their yeah. mentality. There can only be one. And um, um, so like amongst them, they by that point, because this we had spent an entire semester together. I knew these guys really well at this point. And at the end of the semester, we, we they were in town or in the country for a while. So they hated each other at this point. So they're like, we'll go on this trip with you, Jordan, but like we'll, we're switching off. So I literally bounced between the two of them. Like I wasn't with one. I was with two of them like two nights the entire trip. On like a three week thing, and oh my uh, gosh, like wow. I was just bouncing between the two, and it was cool because you get to experience like traveling from this perspective, and then you get ex- get to experience from like Music the other perspective. Opposite. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and you get to switch up the people, which is refreshing. I feel like kind of would be scared ish, yeah, but also like super intrigued, like let me at it, but also, hmm. yeah, I mean that sounds really fun, like a really great experience though. I'll I'll say this like and what was I, all in your backpack? My gear. I packed too much shit. I packed too much shit. I had like fifty pounds when I started. I I ended up like throwing shit out. Mm-hmm. I had too many clothes. I was I was I don't even remember. I was I'd just bring bringing underwear. too much random shit. That's it. Yeah. That's what they say is bring a ton of underwear. Like bring as much underwear, and then it's like three shirts, like two That's, pairs of pants. I bring or like something. two crop tops. What I like about this pair pickup line channels is she even does like a video on like how to pack. For like your backpacking trip, like your like bare essential needs. You said a pickup video. Uh, it's called Pickup Limes. It's our channel. Oh, I bring okay, like two okay. pairs of shorts, yeah. three crop tops, mm-hmm. all the underwear in the world. That's it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe socks. Maybe. Yeah, I guess because you might get cold. I don't really like socks, but like, if you got cold, you might want socks. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all I bring. A blanket, maybe. Minimalism, just like we're saying. It's a beautiful thing. I wouldn't want to bring my phone. Having again. more by having less is what it's all about. Do I say that again? Having more by having less. We only have all mm. this stuff because of money, and money makes it yeah powerful. And then we get it, like you were saying, like we get attached to shit, and then yeah, people become very sentimental to the things. But like I said, when you're on your deathbed, there will not be a single item or a single thing. That can change you or, you know, make you realize make anything like, that you did better. <laughs> yeah. There will not be anything that you'll think like, wow, I'm a better person or, you know, things could have been different because of this item. Like there won't be a single item in your life that I sometimes will have think a that. sentimental value at that point. Like, wow, well, that's just it's so rational to think that you would. You're going to think about relationships and things you didn't do and experiences and things you didn't accomplish. That's what I would imagine, at least. Yeah. It's hard to know till you get there, I'm assuming, but that's mm-hmm. what I would guess. I'm really glad you know who that guy is because that new Earth book, like, really changed my life. And that's so cool that you know he is as well. Check out the Awakening, you know, the Be Here Now one. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that was probably my, that was one of, like, the most life changing books I've read for sure. Yeah. De- definitely helps you reach, like, your spiritual enlightenment. Like, okay, I know, like, you know, I know what I want to be or I know what I want to do in life or I know how to handle certain situations because of this book. Totally. Like, yeah. I feel like people just learn certain things to a certain point and then they stop learning and they're like, oh, I know everything I need to know. And then they quit. Yeah. And then it's like, you're stupid. I have uh, can tend to be very stubborn in that sense. Yeah. Well, you can basically get by with nothing. So with no knowledge, you can be so ignorant and still survive. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Jigs. <laughs> Pinch poke. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I have a theory on that. I feel like I feel like the education system, and I could be wrong. This is also coming from a very biased perspective of somebody that like fucking hates school. Like I hate school with all my being. But uh <laughs> yeah, with that being said, <laughs> do what? So yeah, here you are. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Almost graduated. But uh what was I gonna Oh oh, I feel like they they teach at least in high school especially is they teach the bullshit and i feel like to some extent it's got like some of it's got to be boring because it's essential to learn like some things i didn't like learning at the time but i'm pretty grateful that i know that information now but i feel like a lot of it the way they go about teaching it and whatever they they teach it so that you almost associate it and i don't know if this is what like they whoever they are their intentions are but it's almost 
the end result is that on a mass scale, most people associate reading with being boring or mm, this with being boring or this with being like a shitty use of time or like, I don't know. Like, I feel like knowledge is kind of translated to being boring in a sense because like anything you do like reading and like obtaining information kind of in a sense seems boring, but like it's really beneficial. In my opinion, they just haven't read the right books. Like, exactly. if you don't like reading, you just haven't read the right books. No, it's like exactly. You've Which is so cool that you guys are like curious minds, because you don't you don't meet that very often. Like, you don't meet people that are like actually reading and educating Interested themselves. In yeah, most people kind of just kind of pass the time with anything. Yeah, it's a I feel annoying. like I would have been so different if I would have got like went into college right out of the get go versus like discovering who I was first and then like I'm finding so out what I like I and then have done what I've done. Yeah. I've been through so much and I definitely I've regret educated some things, myself but... in a lot of different other ways. And I feel like if I would have just went to like traditional schooling, like maybe that would have changed that. I would be a lot different. I think college has some of the biggest dummies too. To be honest with you, I think I think people a lot of people they they do their schoolwork. Or and then they maybe they work a job as well and then they do it all so that they can go party, yeah. and then escape that responsibility because they've associated with like pain or negativity or whatever. Mm-hmm. I definitely would have. So respect to you for that. Screwed around Thank if you. I would have continued school. But now I'm finally like, like the, the right headspace that when I go back, like I know I'm gonna be fine. Yeah, I actually I know what I want. Like, like I'm ready to go back to school because it's like I know exactly who I am. Versus when you're 18, like you kind of trying to like wait because I feel like it's like the faster. most the worst time just to go to school. Like you haven't even lived on your own by yourself yet, and yet they want you to know what you already want to do in life, and that's really bizarre. That's exactly because they just want to throw yeah. you into something because all you need is an occupation. But yeah, you go out and experience the world. The fact that you see the world affects all your decisions, and then boom, your career path changes, and then it's like I I don't know. See the world in all its glory. Yeah. So that's, that's a big decision to make at 18, too. Exactly. You see people waste so much money just not knowing what they want to do. I think it's and bullshit. We have I to pay I for college. Aren't the same of what I want to know. We have to pay for education we never asked to need to have in the first place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> so much too i think about college like soon months so much like if we all need a job they should at least make like the first two years free why not i respect that i like, respect that if you choose to go further like i used pay to for think it. like americans deserve free health care but after seeing the way americans <laughs> Bro, eat, it's like adult. fuck no you don't, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, don't yeah, know. we're humans and like if the government's gonna make money they should provide it for everybody I don't know when Americans eat so unhealthy. It's like uh, don't get don't me started on what they it. eat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole and other topic. Drink and yeah. cigarettes and other shit. Yeah. The fact that doctors used to promote cigarettes cracks me up. Yeah. Oh really? I've never heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard of like, There's, like commercials. Oh wow! I've never heard of heroin. <laughs> I, I know they used to like prescribe heroin back in the day. Really? Yeah. Like I want to say in the early 1900s or something like that. Mm. Thought it was like in the 70s, like. Um, they did that. I just lost my train. I know morphine. Was that, like, that overly prescribed? I don't know. I don't know much about that. Yeah. I've morphine, codeine. They'd prescribe it all. I don't know. Speaking of unhealthy behaviors, do you mind if I rip your... Is it... What's it called? Vape? I, I know uh, it's called a vape, but like I didn't know if it had a specific name. Is it a vape yeah. or is it a jewel? I still oh. don't understand. This is definitely... This is a lost vape? Yeah. Oh. But yeah, you hit the side button. Zorion. This is a cool one, by the way. I like it this. this it, I don't like, I don't dislike them, but the ones that are like big and it like just really bulky, I'm like, that's not practical. Yeah. That's this is, like, not this practical. Is a good size. This is a good size. Yeah. But then like the, the small ones of, like, are just asking to get lost, something. I think. It's Blood tasty. clouds. Yeah. That's kind of burnt. This a lot more jewel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it needs juice. This is lemonade. You are so spot on. It's pink lemonade. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm actually surprised I got that. Yeah. Does that have any nicotine in it? Yeah. Do you care if I hit it hit it until I get a nicotine rush? Go ahead. You're gonna get one. I these these things are awesome. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I love them. <laughs> yeah. I've never smoked a cig, never dipped, and I used to prime myself on that for so long and then like Good, don't I don't smoke or do that shit either. Respect. Respect. I definitely will hit that if she's around though. Yeah, they're, just because I'm fun. bored. They're tasty. Yeah, and they're then, like fun. just buzzing around the room. It's like, <laughs> damn. 
We're the best kind of people, though. Exactly. Like, we don't need it. We just use other people's. So let's not buy it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny you say that. Yep. <laughs> no, I literally, I had one for, it's like, like oh, a you few have days. One? And I, I bought, like, one pack of Jewel Pods. I'm like, this is, like, 20 bucks. It's like, this is and so expensive and stupid. stupid. I threw it out the window. I was like, <laughs> and I, I made an Instagram story. I'm like, honestly, I'm, and I'm, I'm like recording myself and I throw out the window and I'm like, I'm going to, well, I got the jewel for free and then I bought pods and I'm like, honestly, I'm going to spend my money on cooler shit than that. Might as well. And like That's literally food, thing. anything. I'm not hating on you right now. We're not hating on you. No. Least, that know. thing is cool. I work I think in a club so dumb. people are like constantly smoking cigarettes and stuff around me and as someone that used to like smoke cigarettes, it's nice like not doing that anymore. So like, but still get my nicotine on. Yeah, because I feel like nicotine addiction is real. How much does I've this never cost you a month? That, so. that actually not very much. I spent like 60 bucks on that, like the thing for it. The body and um, I have only bought juice for it twice like i bought two different kinds and i still have them so it really hasn't costed me that much money other than like the initial 60 dollars starting out because like and then the juice but so it's gonna be so i'm like i i looked up and i started to feel the buzz like a lot but uh so pretty much it's going to be these stairs or almost like a spiral staircase. Or you, you saw the upstairs. Yeah. It's upstairs, all the way on the top floor on the left. All the way on the top floor? So I have to go, like, is this a one-story house? This is two-story. <laughs> two Shit, so We're in the, the basement. We're gonna... <laughs> no. I've gotten better at holding my bladder on this. Is that weird? I can, like, I can hold my bladder in podcast better than I can, like, outside of this. Hurry back. Your birthday's in five minutes. <sighs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. We have been going for an hour and 45. That's We're killing it. That's an impressive podcast. We're coming up on two hours. Wow. How long did you expect this to be? Do you have any like expectations? I thought it would this? be like an hour. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's how long they usually last. But like the, my favorite ones are probably about, yeah, like two. I've, I've gone as long as six on one. Really? I, well, I, I split it up into three, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to definitely have to use the bathroom after her. Same, honestly. Mm-hmm. I feel like we can't, we can't sub out more than one person at a time you got some holes in your shirt it looks like you got shot up right wait really yeah side boob did it hurt (sighs) it did not (laughs) so what what expectations did you have like coming on to this I felt like we had talked a lot about, like, shrimp, uh, Stripper Chronicles, like, just, like, life as a stripper. I figured we'd, we'd talk about that and then stray away, kind of like how it went down. Yeah. And honestly... It, it, I texted you. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Um, wait, when? Oh, just now? Yeah. Um, I, I'll probably receive in a second. Uh, What was I going to say? Oh, oh, the reason I wanted to call you yesterday is because I, I, like, kudos to you because I ask girls, like, somewhat frequently, and girls, for whatever reason, don't want to do this. Like, guys are always, like, they're always about it. Like, most of my guy friends are like, yeah, hell yeah. And I I will be fair, like, I probably have more, yeah, I definitely have more guy friends than I do girls, and I'm sure most girls have more girlfriends. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, I mean, that's just how it goes, I feel. But with that being said, uh. I don't know why, but most girls are like, oh, I don't have anything to talk about. Or like, they're just. I don't know why, because I thought it sounded like so much fun when you like wanted to do a podcast. I was like, I've never done something like that. And that's definitely something I was interested in. Probably just more open minded. I guess so. Do you think it's a confidence thing, too? Or. Um, I think open mindedness has a lot to do with it. Like, yeah, I don't know. You meet a lot of people that think they're open minded. Or, like, say they're open-minded, but really to find out that they're pretty stubborn. Mm-hmm. So. Actually, I, there's something we were talking about at the club that I, I wanted to ask you about, too. So, mm-hmm. you were saying, like, on the topic of, like, dating a stripper, which was really interesting to me because I was with, uh, when was it? Like, uh, I think it, it was last Wednesday. So, I was with one of my buddies, and he's like, oh, yeah, I was talking to this girl, and she was, she was ended up, she being a dancer, and, like, it just got too much for me, man. It was weird. And I, I told him, I was like, like, I see that, but I was like, honestly, like, 
I don't I don't know like how I'd respond until I like actually met somebody that did that. And then I met you on Saturday, which is really funny. But yeah. and it, where where do you think that comes from? Where do you get where do you think guys have this like weird thought of like dating somebody who is a dancer that's like do you think it's you said it was like a lack of security or like a lack I of confidence like, uh, yeah definitely like a lack of confidence like they don't feel like i guess secure enough with themselves that they think like they're they're a uh, woman is maybe gonna find someone better like you know or it can just always go to the simple fact that like your boyfriend doesn't want you know you're hot dan you know you're a hot girl he doesn't want other guys looking or staring at you or gawking over you all night or possessiveness you know. kind of I-, I guess you could say that i don't understand that though yeah <laughs> sorry i'm back <laughs> but also like no don't apologize for being back why not like why i don't understand why some guys dating like, a stripper as a guy people to look at their girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever i would think it was really hot it's and flattering, like really like you know? it's yeah. like yep this is me <laughs> i would have been like yeah that's that's my hot ass bitch up there like that she does that <laughs> So you think you think it's like cooler approach whenever they're like they own it. They're like, yes, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I would rather see a guy do that rather than tear his girlfriend down or like. But I mean, you if know, she gave you a reason to worry, then yeah, sure, worry. But like until mm-hmm. then, and I can understand in a relationship you don't like as far as like lap dances and stuff go. Like you don't want uh, if you're dating a girl, you don't want other guys to be touching her. That's good. Mm-hmm. But it's like at the same time we don't have to do anything we don't want to do. So it's like if you don't want us to do lap dances, we don't have to do that. So so just like any relationship, set boundaries. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. That's important. Mm-hmm. You can still have those and dance key. at the same time. Yeah. But you still make money. I think too. it's a beautiful thing. Like oh, all these other guys get to look at her and think about having sex with her. Just think she's a beautiful thing. And then, but she's the only person coming home to you each night. Like you're the only one she cares about. I feel like a lot of dudes like misinterpret that exact concept of like they almost downgrade on what they could do because they're like, oh, I'll just I'll find a girl who's not going to be hit up by like every guy because then there's some security in that. Mm-hmm. Is that something that's like worried about? Like has how many people is hitting you up, though? Like, I guess social media really does do that one. But like I'm not ever like really too worried about how many people are trying to hit you up. Versus, like, how many people are you giving attention to? Mm-hmm. Like, how many of those people are you, like, actually, like, responding to and, like, giving the attention back or, you know? Because, like, I would want people to, like, want your attention, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can want to talk to you all you want, but, like, are you putting in that energy, too? It's a real question. At least for me. What do you mean putting in that energy? Like, if somebody's, like, messaging, like, hey, you're super attractive, like, blah, 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 blah but you're with somebody are you like responding to those messages like the way you would in a relationship or if you were single or whatever yeah i don't know i don't know i know i mean personally obviously i wouldn't if i was with somebody but like if you were with somebody and they were definitely responding to those and like giving that other person attention i would definitely be worried oh yeah i'd definitely be worried in that situation because that's reciprocation and that's showing a lack of or that's showing interest yeah exactly it's like hmm. then i'd be worried but like if you're just trying to admire and stuff i think everybody deserves compliments you know do you think it's a do you think it's a lack of confidence or do you think it's a lack or maybe even or just a lack of trust or a lack of trust resulting in a lack of confidence are we still talking about dating a stripper yeah okay and by the way i never i never got your text lack Hmm. there's never one there i guess I think it'd be more of a lack oh, of... Oh, shit. I did not text you. <laughs> it'd probably be <laughs> both. Else. Honestly, I think they both go hand in hand. Wait, say that again? Lack of trust and confidence. I think they'd both go hand in hand. Oh, shit. How so? Because, first of all, you lack the confidence to like know that obviously you're the only one that they're interested in. Mm-hmm. But then also you don't trust them enough to only be interested in you. So, like, is it because you don't trust them or... You good? <laughs> or is it because you're not confident in yourself and your ability to, like, bring whatever it is to the relationship, you know? Because, like, if you're yeah, bringing yeah. in everything and you know it, then, like, really, realistically, you're not worried about what sleaze bag she's dancing on in the club giving her money. Because then you're like, 
nobody's gonna I outdo me. Yeah, we exactly. are the best okay. kind of girlfriends. We get to spend some other guy's hardworking money together. Yeah. Right? <laughs> to, I don't know. <laughs> Working That's as awesome. a dancer, it's like I am always picking up the tab. Like, I I'm will say, very good care of it's super sad though. Like I, it is. I, I feel bad sometimes. Like you know, taking people's money. Like. Just because, like, it's a sad have guys fucking come thing. Into the like, club you're and really say, doing oh, this I would right never now? Date like, a lonely. Yeah, like, it's just so sad. Like, yeah. <sighs> what's what's the reasonings for saying that they they would never date a stripper? Um, I think it's just because they probably got cheated on. And stuff, I don't know, but, but it's like you realize you're the supply to the demand, right? Like, we wouldn't be here in here dancing if you were in here spending money. Like, so mm. for you to say like you wouldn't date a stripper is just ironic. It's like even better because it's now I don't have to be emotionally in invested in you, but I still get your money. Yeah. Hmm. Very it's a double ended sword, works. really. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. Yeah. Most definitely. But back to what I was, I think it does take a very secure man and like someone who's like happy with himself and happy with his girl to like know that like, I don't know. I think it's definitely like both sides. Like you need somebody who's going to give you the reassurance and stuff and like all of that. But also you need somebody who's going to support you. So I know my dating life hasn't been shit though since I started dancing and it's like, you know, been going three years strong. Honestly, I don't know how you could even put energy into anybody seriously. That right? I only dance That's for a little bit. I work all the time now, so or travel would dance. That's about it. You could save up that uh that guy's hardworking money. I, I get your text, by the way, and I, I had a feeling that's what exactly what you're gonna say. Yeah. I had a feeling that's what you're gonna say. Um Oh wow. <laughs> it's twelve oh five bitches. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Which uh, on that topic, it, 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 we get we can wrap it up whenever you guys want to. So I'm cool with it, whatever. But um, oh, I don't want to be this old. Oh, it's twelve oh five. Is in yeah. your twenty first birthday. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yes. Hell yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Why do I feel the exact same? Happy twenty first. Thank you. That's so cool. That's so cool that you came over here to do this for your twenty first. Yeah. Wouldn't have rather laid in bed at all. Yeah. This was fun. This Hell was yeah. Fun. I'm glad we made this happen. I was really scared about all this tornado shit, but I was like, you know totally what? Totally worth Fuck it. it. Yeah. Totally worth it. Plus, it kind of calmed down, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't even, like, raining that hard. I don't, I don't remember any points where I was like, damn, the weather. No. That yeah. weather, though. <laughs> the <Yeah>. weather, though. <laughs> Would you look at that? Yeah. I think it was, like, kind of sprinkling at the end, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Do you guys have any... Uh, are you guys cool to wrap this up then? Yeah. Yep. Any um, last words? Any last words? Thank you for letting us do this podcast. Yeah, this it's been was a pleasure. A fun time. Yeah. I really would like to do this again. Like, well, we can pick out some other big topics to talk about. And yeah. I'm down. Smaller Definitely details, do maybe. Yeah. I'm totally down. I'm I'd totally love down. To talk about oh, food yeah. in the next one. The food. Mm-hmm. What kind of food? All of it, <laughs> all of it. Like what humans eat, why they eat it, why our healthcare's gone to shit. Like why? Why our healthcare? Know, there's the realness. In why it. Americans <laughs> die of the most preventative diseases in the most fortunate country? Like it's a real thing. Are we really the most fortunate country, though? Stay tuned. As <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want to talk about this sometime. Yeah, it's uh, I like those topics. I like those topics because uh. I agree. I feel like we don't have like a prevention focus. We just kind of like we operate we, from a we treatable standpoint like, rather than a preventative standpoint. Because from a what from a what standpoint? Uh, from a treatable standpoint rather yes. than preventable. You know, we'd rather you know treat people rather than prevent things because there's no money in prevention. There's no money in prescribing people a good diet that's actually going to change them and make them. But feel that's better. the most practical approach. Yes. Let's also talk about why we need money. Yeah. Because like money seems to be a pretty common factor. Yeah. I'd love to talk I feel like it's it. essential in any economic system, though. Is it? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I mean, like, in your in your. Own, I think like, trading for sure, but like, is necess- is money necessarily like the biggest? Oh, so you're saying some form of like bartering system? Yeah. But I feel like money is kind of like the evolved state of some form of like bartering system. I feel system. like it just has too much power held in its name. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Uh, possibly the camera the camera is actually about to die so if you if you it's a wrap 
It's around. I can maybe charge the camera for a little bit. And we go from there. Yeah, that's cool. Happy birthday. Oh, shit. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So, this bitch is It's legal. time to take a <laughs> shot. Let's celebrate. Yes, she needs a shot. Can we get? Can we do it on the podcast? Is that fair? I'm down. Let's do it. On the pod. Shoddy yeah. on the potty. Uh, oh. sick. Shot, shot, shot. To the nights we won't remember you, but the person I can never forget. (laughs) Oh my goodness. That was the most sentimental thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, because you came up whenever I didn't have the mics yet. Woo! Came a long way, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I love the idea of like starting from shit. Which actually, one last Starting thing I will say, because I, I think this is cool. I think you guys will appreciate, because you guys made a comment like this earlier in the night. Um, so, the the reason, like, not the only reason, but like a big reason why I started doing this podcast is because I my I, I kind of came to like the you were talking about your grandpa. <laughs> they, they won't hear that. <laughs> Are you fucked up right now? The fact that that's been on you this not entire time. And I'm just Have you been drinking? There's been a camera really. this entire yeah, time. I have literally been like this. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Okay, cool. But I, okay, so I, so, okay, so you were saying, your podcast. yeah, so totally, uh, so you were saying your grandma writes something like every single day, and I think that's so cool, by the way, but I, one of the main reasons I, I started this podcast is I've always had a really close relationship with my grandparents. Mm-hmm. And I just, the first, like, few, I started off with my grandpa. Aww. And it, with the, the whole, like, thought That's of, so like, cute. just, okay, so, like, before maybe your great-grandparents, say, assuming, oh, let's assume you met your great-grandparents even. Let's assume, but clearly you didn't meet your great-great-grandparents or your great-great-great-grandparents. Like, you, whenever you I try to imagine I did meet both my great-grandparents. Them, you, but, yeah. you met Her both of them? Yeah. Respect. Yeah, respect. I, my grandma just died last year and she was like 100 years old. Wow. Like my grandparents like have lived to the 100. Really knows. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's good hope for you. Yeah. There you go. Women live long. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'll probably die before you. So. <laughs> Men do die shorter. Uh, but anyways, you start doing because you your stress grandpa. us out so much. Right? You should be fine. No, but I was, I was thinking, I'm like, honestly, like whenever. He what? Whenever you. Th- oh. <laughs> That's the camera just died. Though. Um. So whenever you, whenever you think back on like your past grandpa, or like your great great grandparents, and like the grandparents you just never met, uh, you you don't think much of besides like I'm them so just standing there in the fucking like eighteen really? hundreds black and white photos. They're standing there with their arms like forward. Nobody ever smiles. Nobody smiles because they're, they're like, fucking weird and. They, they looked creepy as fuck. They look. They're standing there looking creepy and hungry and just weird. <laughs> I don't know. Creepy and hungry. <laughs> me. Yeah, exactly. I hate my it's life. It's because they're fit and they're normal looking. Like they're, <laughs> oh, they must be hungry. Shrug shoulders. <laughs> and I was like, honestly, like it's those people of the past that created us. They're completely in our imagination. Like we are. They're low. They're left open to interpretation on however we choose to decide. Like how they were. Which is such a weird thought to me. So I was like, yo, my grandparents are dope. Let's preserve their legacy. I have the opportunity. So I kind of took the responsibility on myself to like start out by having conversations with my grandpa. That's also kind of playing, al- playing along the fact of like, yo, maybe I'll like, maybe I'll like doing this podcasting thing. Cause I got really into listening to podcasts and then I just took the leap and then I started doing it with my friends and whatnot. And here we are. And I think you guys are like hundred. 1,415 guests, so. Hell yeah. Yeah. I feel like starting out with your grandparents you is said definitely 14, the coolest, though. You said 15th guest? 1,400? Uh, no, 114. 114. You still, like, go yeah. back and, like, yeah. we'll talk with your grandparents and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had them on. I don't have them on as much because I don't see them as much anymore, Uh, just living down here. But yeah. I, I try to make a point to have them on. Yeah. Like, they That's were awesome. they were on, like, 20 episodes or ago so or something. That's just so cute. Oh. <laughs> I would yeah. love that. I would love to do that because I feel like you don't get to hear enough about like your family's past. You could and literally it's like never you could enough. learn so much about like who you are as a person versus like how how they were brought up. Yeah. I don't know. How they raised you. I feel like grandparents are always so quiet about yeah. it too. And that's that's a hundred percent like the topics I try to like stray towards. Yeah. Is I want to do asking deep about into their, their past. Like, exactly. Yeah. So what were you so doing like, at this point? Like 
what what were you doing whenever you had my mom? Like, what were, what was going through your head and just this things and that, like that. This and this and this. Yeah. Well. <sighs> any any last words? Happy birthday again. I'm just gonna try to get through this day. Yeah. It's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a long one, Kevin. Oh my God. God. I'm gonna have to leave work early. Oh shit! Need... Yeah, you gotta work at eight a.m. Wait, you work? I thought it open at noon. I work at no. Home. She doesn't work at the club. Yeah. She's oh there. no way! She has had a normal job. For a while. I used to dance. Uh huh. And then I needed to get my shit together because that shit's too bar- like too much on you, at least for me personally. Totally, totally. So I would say where I'm work, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. No, that's cool. Yeah, I respect it. Yeah, I respect you being conscious of what you're gonna talk about, what you're not gonna talk about too. Yeah, it's like I can totally talk about some stuff, but like. Some stuff's better left on the DL. Well, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> it's si- exciting stuff. 21st birthday. Any oh, yeah. Anything last? Here's to probably like the rest of my life never remembering it. Might I well. cannot wait until this podcast comes out. That's my final thoughts. I'm really sad about it because I didn't realize there was a camera <sighs> and I was like all up on my leg. <laughs> so. I, I didn't notice your leg there too much. Really? Honest. Well, I definitely was like this for like. Probably the entire time. The majority of it. And I, I will say, too, I used to, like, keep them, like, posture. 20 ahead. But I'm actually, I'm like, I'm releasing this one, like, pretty soon, like, within the next month. Cool. If so we need to, we could not, probably sit around in late. a circle and make it look like we're City talking edit for a while. it, cut some things it. out. Add some, like, no, I just, I go completely, like, free flow, if you're cool with that. I am more than down. Okay, I'm cool. I'm upset, cool. but I'm okay with it. Hey. So are we done here? Yep, we're done cool. here. Hell yeah. Here we are. Thank you I again. I definitely have to go to the bathroom.